is now the ultimate power in the universe. Hello there. Welcome to Lightsaber Radio, the most outrageous Star Wars show on the web. If you haven't already done it, make sure you smash that subscribe button as well as the bell icon so you will be notified of all of our future episodes. Also, don't forget to press that like button. It helps get these videos in front of other Star Wars fans so they can get in on the outrageousness. So how's everyone doing today? Good. I'm doing good, too. I Well, actually, I'm not super good. Yesterday, like, college football started. Notre Dame lost. Like, oh, they lost? They, I didn't I'm get to finish the game out. from emotional damage right now. <laughs> Wait, they lost? I didn't Wars get to finish podcast. the game. Why y'all keep bringing up football? Because it's football Whoa. season. It's football. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so today we have one hell of a show for you guys. I'm telling you that right now because we're going to be talking about all things Mandalorian. And what better way to do that than have the leader of Clan Wren, the voice of Ursa Wren, Sharp, I want to say this right. Oh, oops. Sharmilla Dever, right? Devar. 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 Okay. Why do you I, I don't know why I can't. I can't. She I'm just told names. you. I know, but I suck at names. I'm sorry, Sharmilla. You know, it's okay. I used to go by Hey You a lot. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So she's been on Rebels and she's been on the Clone Wars. So, you know, she she knows more about the Mandalorian and she was the leader of Clan Wren, you know, Sabine Rim's mom. So like one of my favorite characters of all time. So how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm hot, but I'm good. I mean, like, not hot, hot as like smoking, but like, it's, <laughs> well, I might be that too, but hey. <laughs> I'm in California. It's 105 degrees out here right now. Ooh. Yeah. And it's going to so, get hotter if it's what? It's nine o'clock there for you? It's, yeah, right now, I think it's actually 96 outside right now. So. Yeah, we we've been spoiled. We get like this wonderful moderate weather. So this is like, oh my god! I don't know. We reached 111 Jesus. yesterday. In Idaho? Right. Yeah, we got 111. I think yesterday. No, it was Friday. Friday, I got 111, and I was like, I don't want to be here right now. <laughs> you guys have sticky weather too, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's miserable. But hey, I live what part here. Of, uh, what part of California do you live in? I live near uh, near Los Angeles on the east side. So like near Silver Lake and okay. Pasadena, a place called Highland Park, which is a really cool neighborhood. I used to live in Inglewood. It was terrible. Uh, yeah, Inglewood's pretty <laughs> I was born. Yeah. I was born in Fresno, so, you know. You know, I've never been to Fresno. I've really? heard it's... It's not garbage. That <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go there. It's garbage. It's, 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 it's not, not a nice not. place. Well, look, I'm from Indianapolis, and we used to grow up, and we called it India No Place. So, yeah. you know, which I probably shouldn't say. but Oh, it's okay. I understand. I, I lived in Chicago for a little bit. My uncle actually had a um, – a business where he went and boarded up the South Side buildings. Yeah, n- never want to go back there. And I you know, I went to college in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago was on like, the South Side. You didn't like <laughs> it. I love that city. But uh, I, I, I ain't like. I've been. I I've been like. That was one great thing about my father. My father loved to travel. So I've been to. I've been to every state except seven. And it's yeah. It's it's not good. <laughs> like no, a lot of the states it's like uh i've lived in arizona i've lived in colorado i've lived in california i've Honestly. lived in missouri and yeah i don't that uh, i don't know where to I don't live know. i think the them, best i don't city, like any of them the best city i've personally been to is boston but i'm also a celtics fan so that's oh, a little biased God. i'm a celtics fan i the, as a kid that's awesome i'm know. a celtics to, fan that's still the worst city i got to go to the boston <laughs> garden before the boston garden was torn down and turned into TD Garden before they moved it. So, I mean, as a kid, that's really freaking cool to look up in the rafters and you see, like, Larry Bird's retirement jersey or, you know, all the Bruce and Bruce stuff. I don't know. I've been to to Chicago. I mean, Chicago was nice. But as a kid, you don't really look at the the sketchy, dangerous things. You're, like, looking at the big, tall buildings and all the lights. Same thing with New York. I went to New York as a senior in high school for DECA and – 
that was fairly decent. Uh, we just York didn't get to do much. Dirty. I yes. love oh, the dirtiest dirty. place I have ever been to in my no. life. It's just dirty. <laughs> like, and I seen a rat that was like the size of a cocker spaniel. Like, That's holy crap, true. what is that? Was that a dog? That's true. <laughs> That's true. They're the size of small dogs or large dogs yeah. sometimes. Yeah. I love New York City. If I could like live anywhere. Was- that's like when I was living in Australia. We had spiders the size of dogs. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. I don't do that. Yeah. Hey, I'll, I don't no, do no, that. No, We're no. not talking about that. We don't do that. Oh, you're not a spider person. Oh, no. no. Oh, I don't no. down my house because of a spider. <laughs> literally, there was a spider on the wall. It was like this big around. And I literally took a, the, my wife's hairspray and a lighter and it was <laughs> oh. and the whole wall was on fire. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> I, I don't do spiders. The kids were screaming. It was just me and my kids there. And I, I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Because I kill it. What are y'all doing? Y'all are kids. Y'all ain't scared of anything. I, don't, I ain't dealing with spiders. No. Uh, I That's the only thing I'm scared of is when spiders. When I was little, I used to play with them. I probably yeah, did, I know, too, when I was little. I know. It's a little. I used to like collect them and nope. save them. And I've been terrified of spiders. The only reason why I was terrified of spiders is because my brothers, my older brothers, thought it would be funny to make me watch Eight-Legged Freaks at, like, five years old. And imagining huge elephant size spiders attacking, you know, a small town really freaked me out because I lived in a small town and yeah, it was not. Nope. Nope. Spiders and snakes. Nope. Oh, I, love I don't snakes. mind snakes. I the don't the mind most snakes reptile I'll get is a turtle and I have a turtle, so I'm okay. That's that's I'll tolerate a snake, a snake because my time. wife likes snakes, but I don't want snakes. Okay, Garrison, what do you got for us for a house breaker gotcha. today? I was going to do another football one, but then Notre Dame lost. So I was like, well, fuck it. Football's over for me this year. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of like best quarterback, if which Star Wars character do you think would most likely be like a best selling New York Times author? Ooh. Oh, Palpatine. Hands I think, down. I don't know. Palpatine. Dude. He, he would do something like, I don't know, like my struggle. Palpatine edition. Like, I feel I, like I don't he'd think do, that'd be a very good book. I think he'd do how to how to take over a republic for dummies. <laughs> how to destroy a republic in three years? I think Han Solo would because it would be funny. That's true. And charming. And I can see Han Solo. Right? And all the women would, lack, would be like, I want to lack the love book. story yeah, though. It would that. lack the love story because Han Solo is not lovey dovey. So but that's the, but that's but it's kind of that snarky stuff that's uh, super popular right now. And yeah. then what if you threw in a love story? I right? think Han would be he mad if he read his book and somebody <laughs> threw a love story into it. <laughs> this is like, supposed what? to be an action thriller. This is supposed to be an action thriller. This is a man's man's book. And I think what is this? <laughs> I think Mace Mace Windu. Mace Windu. I think, yep, Mace, I think Windu Mace would be a great author. Diary of a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> With a purple Jeez. lightsaber. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a good one. Okay, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of this show because we got some questions for you. Because you have been, you got to work with Dave Filoni, which is yes. one of our idols. He's he's the he's the best, and he just seems so cool. So when you was working with him, like, what was his like? How did he? react to things like you know how was he well how was his instructions and stuff was he just real cool laid back oh, or was he- he's he's so cool um when i got the job like so they everybody records together usually unless people are out of town and so i was coming in when they already like everybody knew each other everyone was set it was um Ritesh and i he plays my son we came in at the same time and dave took me aside And he started showing me like the art behind it. And he was telling me a little bit about the history. And I, I'm a, I'm an acting geek, so I love that shit. So I'm a, he was telling me a little bit like, okay, Ursa, think about Austrian royalty, particularly the really uh, wealthy people in charge before World War II, um, uh, how, uh, like, you know, female centric power. Like, so he went through and he gave me like a lot of history. And then he showed me, I don't know if you guys remember, there's that piece that's behind Ursa, I think in in the throne room that looks like a Klimt. 
and it's um, with the artist. So it's this picture of her and it's almost kind of deconstructed. He showed me that and he was like, you know, this she probably had painted of her. She's the one in charge, her husband's. So he gave me like all this wonderful information because, you know, the Star Wars war, the world, they don't give you a lot of information before you walk in. So you're kind of a little lost. So, but he was fantastic. And, you know, we, the way that it works is you record like you're, like you're, everyone's talking. So like Garrison will say something and I'll respond. And then Kyle will say something and the CJ will say something and then I'll respond. And so you're going through like that. And sometimes he'll have you then go back, Hey, so let's go back and, you know, I want this to be more um, energetic. Like you, uh, for example, one of the scenes with Sabine, you're, uh, you love her, but you're so frustrated with her because she uh, is never following rules and she has now put your family in danger because of that. And so he'll go in and it's like kind of, I mean, my experience with animation wasn't, it wasn't that people gave you like that specific acting notes. And that was really great. And he's funny. And um, yeah, it was, it's a real fun experience when you're in there. That so. sounds super cool that you guys got like into the history nerdy side of it. Oh, like, I, I love that. I love like, to hear yeah. that. <laughs> me too. Like, I would I, lose my mind to have Dave Filoni expo <laughs> explain Mandalorian history to me. Cause I watch all the Mandalorian history stuff that we get on like YouTube and I'll read everything. I'm the residential Mandalorian huh. person and really in the group. Yes, he is. I love the Mandalorians. Well, yeah. and it was Except cool. Boba Fett. <laughs> really, you don't like him? I just didn't like the the last uh, uh, the the series, yeah. and I was kind of messed up because we like I, we was talking earlier that we had Dave on here or David um uh, Pasquizzi on here yesterday, and I had to tell him like I, I didn't really like it. You were great. Your character was great, but I didn't like the show. I kind of <laughs> openly I kind of <laughs> openly told him I liked Tim more, <laughs> and then See, he was my <laughs> second favorite character. <laughs> I kind of nice just, it was a backhanded one. compliment and I kind of felt bad. Well, you What's know, nice about this one is we can say, hey, we liked your show and we liked your character. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Otherwise, goodbye. No. Um, the cool thing was when I walked in, everyone was sitting out and Freddie Prince Jr. was out there and I get oh. introduced to him and he looks at me and he's like, you don't understand. You're a Mandalorian. You are going to have people come out of the woodwork who are obsessed with this character <laughs> and with you. He's like, Mandalorians are the coolest things. Because, you know, he's kind of a Star yeah. Wars person. Oh, yeah. So um, so that was really, it was like, oh, you know, that that's great. <laughs> cool. And, um, but yeah, so, I mean, like, and I'm, I was lucky. My brother's a big Star Wars nerd. And he gave me, when I got the job, because, you know, there's months from the time you get the job to when you actually shoot it. And you don't really get very many scripts at the beginning because it's all kind of undercover. And my brother reads Star Wars fan fiction. And he had the stuff that was all about the history of Pal 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 Palpatine, right? Isn't that his name, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, all that stuff. So he gave me a huge, uh, I think it was on Kindle probably, a huge, like probably a thousand page history of Star Wars when they were mining in the planets and all this stuff. So I ended up reading all of it so I could get the background so that I would kind of know uh, the darker elements of what I was getting into. Because so. that was one of the best, like to, to see your reaction when you was playing with Sabine. And, you know, I, I was like, like, Oh my God! This is like the worst mother ever. Like she, she <laughs> like she just was like, oh whatever. I don't care what you're doing. You're just you, you, you left Mandalore. You don't even care about the Mandalorians. It's like, she oh my did God! Like care. she was it, just pissed off at her kid for not listening. You know this. You have kids. Oh yeah, and yeah, it it it, it, it just. I love characters that give me an emotional response, something I can relate to, or they they, they give me that emotional uh, that emotional response, like you know. Like either if I don't like a character, it makes me it makes me like them even more. Like when a character really plays that part, and or, or the actor plays that part and causes me to have a, a an emotional reaction to the to that character, that's what I really like. And so that was like one of my questions. Like during like during your career, you have been in Scandal, you've been in Grey's Anatomy, and so many other shows and movies. What type of preparation did you really do other than them thousand pages of 
stuff that your brother gave you to play Ursula Wynn? Did you like watch the Clone Wars or, or watch some of the other stuff, the Star I, Wars movies and stuff? Well, when I got the audition, I didn't even know what it was for. You know, you kind of guess that it's for something Star Wars. You know, it's coming from, I think it came from Lucasfilm. So I knew it was something to do with Star Wars. And I knew it was animated something, but I just didn't know anything more than that. And they just gave you lines that were written that you performed. And so then you kind of are like, okay, um, I mean, like Rogue One is my favorite Star Wars movie. And my brother and I grew up with, watching the the original ones and you know always going to the movie theater to see you know all the other ones and so I was familiar with the world uh and I liked the fact that I knew it was a mom who was uh had a complicated relationship with her daughter and I I mean like I love my mom my mom's great but I'm like we all have complicated relationships with our parents you know you can't help it and so I think that I could go and use that information that I had about like my own experiences of, you know, someone, a mom trying to control you and you having kind of a, an idea of something else you want to do. Right. And then the, the clash of that. Uh, so I, I did that. I'm, I'm a type of actor called a Meisner actor. So I actor. So I go and I kind of like search through myself and figure out like what, uh, where is that? Where is that coming from inside me? And then when I found out it was for Rebels, I did. I watched probably like 10 episodes back to back. So I had an idea of the characters, who Sabine was, um, what world I was in. But I mean, like most of it, honestly, was reading the history of all the Star Wars stuff, revisiting some of the movies that I've seen before. And then uh, talking to my brother, who's like the Star Wars fan, and uh, then talking to Dave when we're recording, and he gives me much more history and story behind it. And from and from what David told us yesterday, he said Dave Filoni knows everything about oh, Star Wars. He knows everything. 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 So I was like, oh, we got to get Dave Filoni on here. I wonder oh, yeah, you him. guys really do. <laughs> but that would be like five different episodes at <laughs> least because he's got that much information. I don't so. think I could talk if he was there. I don't I don't know oh, if I could open my mouth. I think I would be kind of starstruck. He's, he's like, I'm so starstruck. Cool. He's got his like, cowboy hat and he's just kind of like down to earth. And he's really, oh, there you go. <laughs> he's so sweet. I'm like, you know, like, I, I've I know, been lucky I stole enough. It from his house. <laughs> There's a lucky. restraining order. <laughs> no, no, he's not going to come on the show if you say that. Um, I, you know, I've worked with a lot of famous people, so I, he's he's really cool. I mean, like he's really down to earth. He'll make it easy, and that's what he made it really easy. You know, a lot of times when you're coming into an established world, you don't feel all that comfortable because you're a stranger. Didn't mm. feel that way. Everybody was super cool, friendly. So, and Dave, I mean, like it comes from him because he's just like, I love this shit. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a fan. So. Well, see, and, and, and watching some of, you know, that's why, you know, one of the biggest things like that I wanted to discuss with you was working with Dave Filoni because you hear so many wonderful things about him. It's like, all right, let's talk to some people that's actually worked with him. Because a lot of times you hear some stuff online like Dave's great, Dave's this, and then and then you find out from other people that Dave's an asshole. Like you know, but and it, so we're super happy that you know that's who he really is. You know that that makes us super happy because you know we, we never know we might send him some scripts. <laughs> He'll be like, yeah, oh, he's with super this crap. cool. He's really cool. So yeah, so you should be happy about that. Yeah. Well, one of the things like I was reading an article not too long ago and. They said when he was, he went and seen Ahsoka, um, the preview for Ahsoka, the first episode of Ahsoka, and they said he cried. And I was like, oh, man, that's so cool. Dave loved it that much that he cried. Oh, God, that's just that just makes him seem so much cooler. You know what I'm saying? That he has that type of emotion that his his creation became this this giant thing and Ahsoka being his his character. So it's like. So did you get a chance to meet George Lucas? No, no, oh. no, I wish, I wish. Funny enough, I've never met Shonda Rhimes either, and I've been on three of her shows, so there you have it. <laughs> I think sometimes it's just hard to meet people. But um, I did get an awesome, when I have a moment, I'll go grab it. Um, from being on The Clone Wars, they sent me a, um, from Lucasfilms, they sent this really cool sculpture. So that was, that was a bomb. 
But is, it the, is it the Yoda sculpture? No, no. Hold on a second. I'll go get it. Okay. Where you go, CJ? I had to let little man out. He can't open doors quite <laughs> good yet. So he's, he's like shaking. He's shaking his door. Like he's got the handle, but he can't pull the handle. So he's like really shaking it. And I'm like, oh, I better go get him out. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. No freaking way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't. I mean. <sighs> you see? I already have a group of friends who's like, when you die, I want that. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> you need some new friends. Your friends are, <laughs> when you die, I want that. Like, yeah, when I die, literally. you're like, oh, y'all, yeah. you were talking about me, but yeah. die. So it's like, I promise, I, I have like three people who are uh, fighting for it, for, yeah. for me to do put a, in my will. Do a raffle. <laughs> Dude. Charge everybody 10 bucks. All right, exactly. who wants to get it when I go? <laughs> it would be a good mm -hmm. charity thing. You know, it's that's actually a great idea. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I will do that. My friends who are fighting over it now will be very upset with you, but okay. <laughs> well, they can, they can be a part of the that's bidding process true. and it goes to a good charity. That's a And if they have idea. a problem, you follow us on Instagram and shoot me a DM and I will argue with you that that was a good idea. No, I, I love that idea. That's what I'm going to do. Thanks. Or that's you perfect. could donate to, donate it to your favorite Star Wars podcast. I mean, that might be a good. Uh -huh, that's very <laughs> scary. <laughs> you guys are charity too, huh? Yeah, we we strive for excellence here and helping the community lighten up a little bit. You know what, though, it's going to create a fight among the three of you. Those who gets to keep it? No, we're going to have gotta, we're going like, to have a custody it. thing here. I, I, yeah, I get it for I get it for four months. Garrison gets it for four months. CJ gets it for four months. That's a whole year, and then okay. we just trade off. Okay. That's what we'll do. Um, that's a good. That's a good. I one had to do a that. question. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I had a few questions. Yes. Sorry. So you've been in like a whole bunch of roles. Like, right? We mentioned Scandal. I'm pretty sure. Like, you, obviously Star Wars. You you were even like in an episode of Gilmore Girls, weren't you? Like, I was ages I was. ago. Ages yeah. ago, when I was first starting out. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess. Be, like what what kind of roles i guess do you like the most what kind of roles are you looking for are you just good with anything or you know uh, you're asking me my dream question uh thank you for doing that <laughs> um i you know lately i've kind of segued into uh you know i i started young so i was playing kind of like roles that were younger for a while um I wish, I mean, like, I'd love to play Ursa Wren in something because I like that kind of complicated, interesting, mm -hmm. uh, challenging. I find her, uh, I always say that, you know, we all as human beings are on a spectrum between white and black, say, and not skin color, but like the idea of, you know, pure light and then dark. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm really into like Joseph Campbell and stuff like that, which is why I like Star Wars stuff. So um, I like people who... Uh, who kind of live in that uh, kind of murky, grayish kind of world that there is good, there is bad. Um, so I, I like the th three-dimensional complicated characters and Ursa is one of them. I've done some in a few movies, which is always fun. I like playing villains. I don't get to do it often because you know, I look pretty sweet. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I always thought that would be really cool. Um, I have some dream roles I'd like to do. You know, there's a book by Jhumpa Lahari that I've been dreaming about for, um, she's a famous New York Times uh, booker winning author that um, it's about the tsunami in Southeast Asia and a love story. Uh, that would be my Ooh. dream. That's like my number one dream. Um, and it's a, it's a messy, complicated love story of two people who uh, want to be together, but ultimately they don't bring out the best in each other and they go off oh, and so one like dies. Oh, crossed lovers. Yes. Yeah. I like yeah. That. I like that. Um, and it's uh, people who are in their, uh, in their like mid to late thirties. So they've lived life and they take a chance on each other and it doesn't um, ultimately for them to be true to themselves, they can't be together, you know, for them. And that's life. And I kind of, well, I like that idea that life is complicated. You don't always get what you want. Right. So it's kind of um, like one of you, those. So you like, so, the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's, it's one of those situations like we love each other, but we're not compatible. Yes. Yeah, except for like amazing sex and like, you know, this period of time of like, a, you know, two weeks or something that you live 
in Italy and live this dream <laughs> and then you break off and go live your lives um, right. separately, you know, and, so you and like always that, the realism like the it's it reflects a lot more to people's real stories rather than just fake happy endings. I guess. Yeah. You know, I, I remember reading somewhere someone said that they and I always take this that they love being an actor because it illuminates the kind of inner soul conflict within mm -hmm. people and inside people. And I like, I love that. I love that idea. I think that that's a dream of being able to do that. But I mean, you can do it on television now, right. you know, streaming, there's some amazing stuff out there. I've, I'm like, from the time I was a little, I loved movies. So that's my dream. I'm like, I wanna, you know, I wanna right. do film. You're living like your that. dream. Yeah, yeah, I mean like, you know, I'd like to do more, but, um, but then also like in animation, I, I I'm, you know, I didn't know that there was a kind of darker world in animation, which I love. And, you know, I audition a lot nowadays for that sort of kind of a little bit of the edgier animated mm -hmm. stuff, which I love. So at, as an actor that's played both live action movie stuff and played, you know, a voice actor and thing, which one do you think is harder to do? Hmm. Um, oh. You know, actually, it, huh? That's I've never been asked that question. Huh. <laughs> um, you know, I think each of them. This is going to sound like really kind of um, wishy washy, but uh, the cool thing about doing animation is it's not just you. So I have this voice, and if you close your eyes, you well, you guys might imagine anybody has this voice. So you're not limited by what you look like. You're and other people get to come in and create. So it's really collaborative in that way. Like, cause when you record also, they have a camera on you. So for Ursa, they followed like certain face movements I would make or even body movements I would make. They were capturing that, that the animators could then put into this character. Um, you know, it's always like on stage, because I've done a lot of stage, it's you, it's only you. And you right. have the two two hours to create this thing top to bottom with the other people on stage. So it's like, nobody can tell me what I can't or can't do. You know, it's whatever's in the script and whatever's in the moment I get to do. So that's super exciting. But you need a lot of stamina for it because it's exhausting. Um, can on camera, like TV goes really fast. So you for most of the stuff I've done, you don't get a whole lot of takes. So you have to kind of go in with your initial idea of something and immediately become friends with everyone there, or become enemies with the, you know, kind of like be in the moment. But that's also challenging in that you don't get to establish um, any sort of like long-term story with anyone. Or you don't get to get, you know, I don't get to know CJ or Garrison right. or Kyle that way. Um, and it doesn't become a family and movies you get so many takes so you get to try all these different things um and uh and you and the director are kind of creating it together along with the story um but then those like i'm mean, kind of the way star wars happened i think we shot it in or recorded it in 2017 and it didn't come out until 2000, late 2018, I think, 2019. Movies are like that. Like you shoot them and it can be like I did um, film last year in during during COVID, June and July. And it only finished now. And it's only going to festivals in the next month or so. So it will be probably a year before anyone will get to see it. So, I mean, like, you know, that's, it's kind of like all over the place. Yeah, because I was always, you know, you think about it when, you, when you're recording voice and you're looking at, you know, it's just your voice. So you got to, like, create this, your own type of being. You have to create your own character within the character that they want you to be. And I, it, just, it just seems like that that would be a little bit harder because you don't have the facial expressions the same as because your voice changes as you're as you're you know you're smiling your voice gets higher you frown your voice gets lower and it's i just 
from my experience, it's just been it was a it was hard. You know, it was like, hard. Yeah, it, it so was hard. That's you, why I was but like, when you look at the character, like you see that person, like okay, I'm looking at a star- stormtrooper behind you, right? And mm-hmm. that stormtrooper, when I look at him, I'm like, oh, you know, he looks kind of his voice would be very still. It would be very low. It would be very compressed. I mean, there are things that when I look at him, I get a feeling. And that doesn't necessarily have to be the way I look as a human being, which is kind of cool then. Oh, okay. Right? Because I can like, I can play around with who, and somebody else created that. So it's not because every time, whatever my voice is, it goes with this on camera. So um, there is a freedom in a way, you know, to be able. Like you're not limited by anything. You can kind of be any type of character. You can be anything. And it can, and there doesn't have to be a story behind why, say, this sweet face who is Indian American is living Mm. this life or telling this story because Mm. you could be anybody. And that's something that's kind of exciting about voiceover work. Okay. okay, so I have a question. So yeah. in in your in your career, has there been like a role that you really desperately wanted, but didn't end up getting, for other roles that you did get? Like if you were like, hey, you know, I got this role, but I want to try out for this role. Uh, I really want this role that I'm trying out for, but I have this, and it's going at the same time. Like, have you ever had that conflict of like picking? one thing over another in your career and then realizing, damn, I should have picked the other one. <laughs> I, I, I'm, you know, I'm a working actor, so I kind of take the jobs <laughs> as they come. Um, uh, you know, it ha- it's happened with stage stuff. Like, you know, if you sometimes will get like a movie or you get TV show and then you'll, someone will come to you and they'll say, we want you, an uh, author, like a playwright will come and say, I want you to be in my play. And a lot of times you can't do both because you've got to be flexible enough for the TV mm-hmm. and film stuff. But um, I-, I hope the next time I talk to you, I will have more of those stories and it'll be something <laughs> really famous. But I mean, there's lots of parts that I wanted that, I mean, this is kind of crazy. When I first, first moved out to LA, or I think I was coming out to visit, I auditioned for The Matrix 2 and 3. And I oh. met the Wachowski, they were brothers at the time. Um, and I got really, 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 really far. It was one of the two, they were deciding between two people. Um, and I didn't get it, you know? And that's something that, you know, there are things like that that have happened that you're like, holy shit. Like, I wonder what my life would have been. You know, I was so young and and like, what would have happened? Or, you know, God rest her soul. I did a chemistry test with Anne Heche for a TV show that she was starring in. And so hmm. it was, they they wanted me to be her nemesis on it. I'm like, wow, I mean, like, what, like, you, there's all these different stories that could have been your life as, as an actor if, you know, but it's not just doing a good job and it's not just, um, you know, being, providing something interesting for the character. It has to match with everyone. It has, you know, there's lots of elements in why you get chosen. Okay. So. I was just curious because I was sitting there and I was like, I wonder if she's like had a role where she's like, okay, I like this role. I got this role. I landed this role, but I'm trying out for this one. And I'd really prefer this one more. Like this one, <laughs> this one looks a lot nicer of a role. It suits me more. I'm like, uh, you know, I, I, I like darker stuff. And I was on a sitcom for a year and it was an incredible experience. But I mean, like at the same time, I was like auditioning for Curb Your Enthusiasm, some interesting roles on that or stuff that was probably more in my wheelhouse, like stuff that I liked. I think at the same time I did that show, I had auditioned for a lead on another Shonda Rhimes show. I mean, like that was probably more along the lines of what I wanted to do. But I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of things are surprising. Like, did I know Ursa Wren was going to be Ursa Wren when I got the part? No, I had no clue. You know, and the coolest part of it is the way the audience is. I mean, like the fans love that character. And so that's even why Dave told me, he was like, I had to write her in to the Clone Wars in this, like the room because she would be there and the fans will like have, they'll be amazed by it. They'll love this shit. 
So then that's not something, I mean, like I never thought I was going to do voice acting. I loved King of the Hill growing up. You know, I love that show. <laughs> but um, it wasn't something I thought that it would be, you know, I'd do a recognizable or character people would love. So that's cool. That's something that came that I didn't expect. So how did you get into, I guess, acting in the first place? Like what route did you even take? I was, uh, I started off as a singer in high okay. school and uh, I was really shy as a kid. So, and I was super emotional, which my mom did not like. My mom and dad were like, <laughs> oh my God, stop it. You're so dramatic. Um, and when I went to college, I got mentored by three pretty um, important people in the acting world and the theater world. And, you know, from the time I was little, I was a crazy movie person anyways. I've seen mm -hmm. so many movies. And, um, yeah, and from there, I, I was trained in college, and I got to work professionally okay. when I was in school because I didn't go to a conservatory. And um, from then, I just was like, you know, sometimes when you, like, I'm sure you guys kind of feel this way about this podcast, right? Like, sometimes you do something, and it marries what you love doing, and the stuff that you feel like you're learning stuff all the time too. And it's like, oh, I'm really good at this. And I feel like it makes me a bigger person and allows me to live a bigger life and, mm -hmm. um, and just like tell different people's stories. And that for me was the, the clicker. And then, I mean, like from there, it's it's hard work. You know, being an actor yeah. is not, I, no one ever, even like it seems like, oh man, you're rolling in the dough. What is, I was laughing so hard. My, uh, my boyfriend, when he first started dating me, he looked me up on the internet and it said that I was worth something like, Thirty-three million dollars or five million? I was some amount that I was You're like, like, I wish. I Where's wish. I'm like, first thing, how is that possible? Second thing, I wish. You know, or first thing, I wish. Second thing, how is that possible? So, I mean, like, it's it's uh, if I knew what I knew know now, would I have still chosen it? Probably, um, but it, it's uh, it's not for the faint of heart. You spend a lot of time not working, which or you're, you're working as auditioning. And I mean, like, right. I could tell you 10,000 jobs that I wanted that I didn't get characters. I mean, like one just happened the other day for a movie. So, um, but, uh, you know, then the ones you do get, you get to put your stamp on it. So. Right. So it sounds like you got to get used to rejection. Oh my God. There's so much rejection. <laughs> so I'm like, I've always been glad I'm not a dude because you guys have to deal with a lot of rejection. I mean, like just because you know when you're dating, <laughs> right? I mean, like, right. I mean, girls can be tough or, or boys can lucky. be tough. You're I mean, pretty lucky. She, she, she picked me and I oh. don't know why sometimes. Well, <laughs> so you're very lucky. That's probably why. Cause you're nice and humble. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just it's a lot of re a lot of rejection. <laughs> a lot. I'm sorry, I didn't. Know a lot of people don't up. understand. No, no, it's actually good because I think that people should know it. Not everybody is, um, you know, uh, you you don't get every. Even if you're famous, you don't ever get every job that you want. Right. And you make the best out of the ones that you do get. And there's a a, a lot of people. When they look at acting, they be like, oh, yeah, you, you make all this money and blah, 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 blah. But they don't understand that they're working 16 to 20 hours a day. <laughs> yeah. They don't understand that. Right. Yeah. I feel the regular people, they look at acting lights, camera, fame, fortune. It's a grind. It's like, a grind. It's and a something work. as stupid as when you have the lights on you and you're in hour number 12, mm -hmm. your makeup starts like because the lights are hot. Right. So right. your makeup starts like dripping and they're putting more <laughs> and more yeah, like yeah, they're yeah. like, we got to put more stuff on her. I remember on this is funny on Scandal and I'm a, I'm a slender woman on Scandal. I was in double Spanx the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> double spanks and your wives will all know about that double spanks because it's i mean like so there's strange things around uh around it right but and right. it's a weird and it's a weird profession that when you work you are working like 12 15 most of the time you're working these crazy hours and you're like kind of sucked in 
And then when you're not working, you're like, oh my God, where's my next job? I'm never going to work again. <laughs> so you know, there's nothing regular about it's like, it. Like, Constantly worrying about it. Oh, man, out evenly. That would, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. I hope my agent gives me another uh, another addition, man. Come on. Man. I ain't yeah, working completely. four months, man. <laughs> what's, what's happening? So yeah, so that's, I mean, like, that's a reality. So it's good people know, and like, just like every other job, it has good things and bad things, you know? Like, right. I'm most people in their jobs, you don't get turned down because, like, I've gotten turned down because I'm too dark, I'm too light, I'm 5'7", so I'm too tall often. Um, I'm too skinny, I'm too fat. Like, there's everything, my hair's too Dang, long. I can cut my hair, your hair's too <laughs> short. I mean, like, it's like, you know, it's uh, just like every other, I think, job. It's uh, okay. it has its negatives and its positives. So I guess hindsight's twenty twenty, right? So looking yeah. back, is there anything about your career that you would change, or is there <laughs> anything about like a particular role that you would do differently? Um, yes, all of the above. Uh, career change. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I think. I, I'm from the Midwest, and so mm. I didn't like to call in favors because I was always like, I got to be able to do it by myself. Right, right, right. And uh, I think that I wish that I would have kind of networked better when I was young, you know, when I was first starting out. I think that would have been okay. helpful and uh, maybe had more confidence so that when stuff like the Wachowski, you know, like the Matrix stuff or, you know, big mm. stuff happened when I first moved out, that I would have been uh been more confident to be like, I, I'm great. I can, yeah, I'm like, I haven't done this before, right, but I can right. do it now. Um, so that definitely, uh, you know, there's lots like, uh, I, I had wished that, uh, I was always joking that I wish Lauren Wellman had had an affair with the president. Um, <laughs> Tony's awesome. Um, but, oh, no. uh, <laughs> I always My wife's going to love to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's going to be, um, but, that's going to be a good one when this airs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I'm like, that's not my decision to make, but uh, yeah, I mean like, you know, or Scott Foley, either one, that would've been good too. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean like, so, uh, you know, it's a mix between what your what they want your character to do and, and what you want to do. But there's a lot of times, absolutely. I mean like a lot of it is, I mean a lot of it is confidence. Like I, uh, I would love to be able to like, in my younger days, be able to go in and be like, this is what I'm giving you and this is the best in the world. And, but you know, I'm from Indiana. So it's always like, <laughs> you think that really, let me tell you all the ways you are not the best. So. All right. All right. So I guess you had something you would have wished um, in scandal. What's something you might've wished in uh, rebels then or right. clone wars. Something oh, you might've changed in that. I would have liked to be one. on it more. Definitely. Definitely. Well, I will I say one of my. I don't think anybody would be opposed to that. Yes. Uh, thank that. you. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite moments was when, and you guys, I'm terrible with character names, so you guys will remember. There was a moment where Ursula shoots the guy, and then the Darth Vader theme goes behind her. And uh, I love, I thought it was so much fun shooting people. And um, <laughs> when, I, I, that's, I mean, that's going to make me sound like I'm some crazy person. I'm <laughs> so not. Much fun but. Shooting um, people. <laughs> No, uh, no, I know. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I thought that was that was. I remember walking out of after recording that and being like having ear like grin to grin, like or, yeah, what is it, ear to ear grin. Um, right. I would have dreamed like Jin Orso would be a dream role. I would have loved to have played someone like that, and yeah. that you know to be able to do something like that uh, live action would be even better, but. Uh, yeah, like I, I would have loved Ursa to be, um, we could get more into her relationship with her husband, which I think is really kind of interesting. He's like this artsy kind of more soft person and she's the hard authoritarian, right. authoritarian. Um, I would have, you know, I think it would have been cool if she was either, uh, more, um, uh, antagonistic with mm -hmm. uh, with Sabine and with the rebels, or alternately would have kind of warmed up to helping them more. But I kind of like the antagonistic. I like kind of villains. So um, 
I think that would have been fun. But I'm glad she was in it. So I'm, I'm right. happy with that. <laughs> I like it. We're getting some good stuff. This is fun. <laughs> so I, I have a question. So if if you didn't play Ursa Ren, is there a character in the Star Wars universe, voice or not, really, son, <laughs> voice or not, that you would play? Like anybody you'd prefer, like in the the animated series. Like if yeah. they gave you a role, or they like they gave you a choice to pick one specific character. Like who would who would be that character other than obviously Ursa Ren? Oh man! Somebody you can bring your talent. Like I mean, you brought your talents out with Ursa Ren, but like somebody that you like looked at and be, like, oh, that would be a cool fucking role. Like that. That is sound, me. Uh, this is gonna sound super terrible, but I'm I'm not all that familiar with all the female characters in the Star Wars <laughs> universe. Right. Animated one. Sorry, sorry. Um, so good. I can't off the top of my head think of. Uh, I think. This this new Andor show, it's supposed to be a little bit more realistic and gritty and getting into like that deep human stuff that you were talking about. So I think putting you live action into this new Andor series coming up might be awesome. Like a senator or like a politician that's like <laughs> playing both sides. Like you like that. You like you see like I that do. middle ground. I do. So like playing like I'm like I'm going to help the rebels and make money and I'm going to help the empire make money. And I'm gonna do some shady, shady stuff. I like that. I like the shade, and especially when it's on live action, it's not somebody like I don't have the face that you would expect that from, and that's yeah. why I like that because it's like, oh, she's wicked. Fan casting, fan casting. All the fans <laughs> go out there fan casting for Andor. Please, season yeah. two, season, season two, two. <laughs> season two. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, well. like I could totally see her in this Andor series coming up. I though. could, yeah, no. From yeah. what we've heard, I think Andor would suit your uh, your acting style. Like you said, you like to play that middle ground, and you're you have such a kind face, so it, you would not expect to get double crossed. Exactly. It's actually very good. Or like one of those murder mystery shows. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> or you know what? I actually loved Knives Out. I thought that was a great okay, movie. See, I was gonna, yes. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, okay. love that movie. Or I Murder. Like, did you like Murder on the Oriental Express? Did you, you like know, that one? I, when I was a kid, I read a lot of uh, Agatha Christie, who it's, you know, it's mm -hmm. so yeah. um, I remember it from, and, I, and it's been multiple versions of it, and I'm a big old movie fan, so I haven't seen the new one, but I saw the old one. But And my, one of my favorite actors of all times is Ingrid Bergman. And um, she's in the old one. She plays the role that Penelope Cruz plays in the new one, I think. So, okay. yeah. So Gar Saxton was the person that you shot. Oh, that. Thank you for. Good. Yeah. I don't like Gar Saxton anyway. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for like ridding the this. Because he was going to shoot Sabine in the back. Yeah. But I, I like the fact that you shot Gar Saxton. So, I mean, cool. I'll take that. He's thank a traitor you. in my eyes anyway. Thank you. He defiles the Mandalorian armor. So. Yes, he joined the yeah. he joined the Mandalorians. I'm sorry, I felt kind of hurt by that. You so know, I love Darth I'm, Maul. I'm curious, like, what is it about the Mandalorians that has kind of, um, kind of attracted your interest and like have made it? Yeah, so much Me? CJ. Oh. Yeah, so okay. much uh, that. Like, it, oh no, the questions here. Oh, did I ask? <laughs> <the question? laughs> no, so well, because you honestly, guys are young, like you're you're. 23 or 25 or is it 23 25 23 25 oh, okay i'm 25 so, so you I'm guys old. are I, i'm a grandfather please. i'm about to have my fourth grandchild you you're you're a young grandpa then i am but i'm, I'm still old. uh but i mean like you guys are young so did you grow up on like i'm curious about so how the my attraction to like the mandalorian culture i'm a big history buff i love history to death and their culture is really it has a samurai, but it also has a Viking feel. And I, I love that a lot. And with the Mandalorians, like when I, you first see Boba Fett, you're like, oh, who the hell is that? That is awesome. And then it just progressed. And when Clone Wars, he gave us that arc with Maul and the Mandalorians and the Death Watch. And just their culture was so different from what we're used to watching with like, you know, Jedis and Sith and the Coruscant people and people of other planets that are poor and it, with the Mandalorians, they were just to themselves. It was, we are a proud culture. We are a strong culture. We are warriors. We'll die, you know, with, you know, with our weapons in our hand and we'll protect what we love the most. 
And that's, I think I really enjoyed that aspect because like my family is from Scotland and we, we protected the borders of Scotland during world war one and two. And it was, it, our family was very proud and we'll, we'll die with our name and we'll be proud of our name until the day we die. And I think that's what attracted me to the culture more. Like the warrior culture. Of. Yeah. It's just yeah. the warrior and aspect. Honor. And yeah. And the honor and just the integrity that wear that armor was like, for in, uh, my family in Scotland, we are very proud to wear our family crest. Like if it's not on us tattoo wise, it's on us on a jacket or a hat or a shirt. And it's, it, it's, a, you know, we wore it with pride and we still wear it with pride to this day. And that, you know, my grandfather always says, you better be proud of your last name. Cause it's a strong last name. And with the Mandalorian culture, it was, it's the same way, you know, you gotta be proud of your armor. Your armor is your life. This is, you know, <laughs> this is the way. And that, it was just, it was that aspect of it all that really like opened that door for me and attracted me to the Mandalorian culture. Like the Jedi's, they're like, oh, peace and serenity. We don't need to go to war. And the Sith, they're like, kill everybody. And <laughs> I'm not a big politician fan. So Palpatine wasn't a very big interest in me other than Kyle. Kyle has really opened that door for like reading more about Palpatine for me. Same thing with Dooku. Um, but no, I just, I just like that the culture. Mandalorians because they didn't take no shit. Well, that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, it was just you know, this is oh, our home. fight. Let's do it. Yeah, come on. And I think <laughs> I think that's what really got my attention was just that there are proud people and there are strong people, and it doesn't matter if the Empire takes them out. It doesn't matter if the Jedi take them out. It, it it's we're, we're in survivors. numbers. Yeah, and you won't know where we're at, but we're everywhere. And I think that's the best thing about the Mandalorian culture is that you never know where they're at, but they're everywhere. How about the rest of you guys? How about Kyle? How about <laughs> I, just, I like them because they did like because they kick ass. Because yeah, <laughs> and like I wasn't a big Mandalorian fan. Like I read all the books, and like I read the uh, Mandalorian War, so I knew about Boba Fett. I knew about the Mandalore because of Revan and and some of the different. Um, some of the different characteristics, but I wasn't really a big Mandalorian fan until the Mandalorian show came out. And then, cause it showed that other side of the Mandalorians, like, okay, this dude's a bounty hunter. He's kicking ass, taking names, but then he gets this kid and it like changes his whole, his whole atmosphere. Like, and it kind of reminded, reminded me of myself. I've always been a fighter my whole life. I've, I always fought. I always just was crazy in the streets doing stuff. But then when I had kids, it changed me. It made me into a different person. And I could understand, like, the reason he did the things that he did. I, it was relatable. And then that's when I became more of a Mandalorian fan because it was relatable. I could relate to being in that type of situation and understanding that things, as you grow in life, you change. Yeah. So that's oh, that's man. where my my thought to the Mandalorian until the book of Boba Fett came out, and then I was like, "What? They turned Boba Fett into a cookie maker? He's saving the town. He runs up bakery. Say it right. <laughs> He's not a cookie maker. He runs up bakery, uh, and he protects his town." You guys are making me look stupid. CJ's like my family honor. Kyle's like I had kids, and I'm just like they look cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, that's all right. Well, and it's, the thing is, is like the clones were, the clone armor was inspired by Jango Fett's armor. And that's why I'm a big clone fan also is because when you look at a clone's helmet, it's very, very in tuned with a Mandalorian helmet. It you know, is, it's very yeah. similar. There's a lot of aspects to it. And obviously they're just direct clones of Jango Fett, a real Mandalorian. Yeah. But for and, me, I, I think it's kind of similar to you. Um, where it's got the the history aspect i'm a big history buff and kind of how you like when you first got into the role you kind of had this whole crash course on like mandalorian history and character backstory for me the the mandalorian has a very rich backstory that you can deep dive in it for hours and get lost and get lost in it so I, i like the i like the history behind it i like all the backstory i like all the intrigue i also like how they're they seem to be a little bit more real like jedis um a lot of the jedis can seem almost kind of one-dimensional in their characters we're like we're good we protect people you know what i mean i mean anakin obviously shows you something different gives you a little bit more character build up and emotion but mandalorians seemed like people you know what i mean they're very tough very strong but you can tell they're still struggling with things too 
You know what I mean? I, I don't like that in some of the Mandalorians. So there's this kind of interesting because the helmet covers so much, right? So there's this mm -hmm. element of mystery that you can almost uh, you can almost put your own your own personality, your own face on there because right. it really is blank, right? So it's almost like a mirror to to be like, oh, I could see myself in that position. Also, the the jetpacks are pretty fucking cool. Let's be honest, <laughs> right? Like, I'd like to be able to fly like that. I think that's not gonna lie. Cool. When in yeah. season one of Mandalorian, when he looks at the heavy gunner that John Favreau plays, he's like, I gotta get me one of those. <laughs> Everybody in that moment was like. Yo, real shit though. Everybody uh, needs a jetpack. Uh, like, that's awesome. Do you know Wait, how much you, easier life would be if we all had jetpacks and we could just fly around? Did you that, hear that? It though, would be so great. In the news, wasn't there somebody, it was like a few months ago, that they thought had a jetpack that was flying around? Am I am I not making this up? I think no, no, it actually seen it. really it, happened. There, 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 there's actually, I just read an article not too long ago about a guy in England that is created the first, and it's not fire propelled like the jetpacks that you know mandalorians is um it's hydrogen propelled i think i don't know i was reading an article because it was interesting i can't remember exactly what it yeah. said but it, it, it's some Jet other Pac type man flies over grand rapids <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's real <laughs> it's real so, I, mean, I don't like think i would want to try it you know i mean i, I would one let thing other to say, people uh, test it first test yeah, it first I, then i can do yeah. it i want it to look like the jetpacks we see in mandalorian before i even attempt to use it because mm. that looks like a very simple system mm. and it it, it, it <laughs> took it took the jar in a couple episodes to figure it out but well, that, it, that was like my thing always when watching the Mandalorians flying around. Like, how do you steer this damn thing? Like, you're just and you just go like, how do you steer? And then watching in the Rebels episode in, in episodes that you're in when Ezra's trying to do it. It's like he's flying there. We're like, dude, you're going to die. <laughs> like, you, you done trained all this Jedi stuff, but you're about to you're about to die because of a jetpack. Hey, no man, Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan and Clone Wars got it figured out pretty quick. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Mm -hmm. He got it figured out pretty quick. But yeah, it's a, I don't know, that, that that's kind of scary. That scares the shit out of me. I'll be like, what the hell? Like, just imagine flying into a, I, my luck, I fly into a bridge or something. <laughs> oh, that, well, what man. you need to do is get an Oculus. And I'm sure there's some program you can yeah, practice there. doing it, right? <laughs> yeah. Kyle's just going to have nightmares, though, because in his <laughs> Oculus, he's going to hit everything. Oh, and he's yeah, going to be like, probably. nope, can't do it. Can't do it. Sorry. I don't Sorry, know, my, it, it, it's crazy. Well, and... You know, since this is the first time you've been on the show, and I don't know how many times that you've watched uh, one of our episodes before, but recently I found out that I had MS. And, like, my morality uh, or mortality thought process is a little bit different now. It, like, before I didn't, I wasn't scared of nothing. Now it's like, wait a minute, hold, what? Uh, uh, dying? Oh, no, wait, that, that's scary. I, I don't want to think about that. So, like, anything, I, I'm, I'm more restrictive on the things that I do now. I think about things a little bit differently than I used to, so. Well, and you also have a lot of people who are part of, you know, who are immediately, you know, and involved with you and needing you. So there's a lot of extra weight on your mortality too. I mean, so I had this car accident, right? I was T-boned by a construction truck and uh, I'm lucky to have walked away. And I think to my sites brought up a lot of issues about mortality to me. I mean, you know, you got, gosh, like if I would have died then, that would have been the, the breath of my life. That would have been it. Right. You know, and what are the things that I haven't gotten to do or that I that I feel haven't been true to me that I now feel like I have uh, I'm motivated to kind of be truer to that. My and thing was my thing was accomplishment. One of one of my favorite Bible verses. I went to school for practical ministry and biblical theology. But one of my um, one of my favorite Bible verses is um, Proverbs 22 and six. Oh, no, it's not. Too, but that's one of them. But um, there's a I can't remember what the verse is now, but it says that you should leave an inheritance for your children and your and your children's children. So I think about that and I'm like, OK, I ain't got enough money to leave all these people. You know, I got four kids. You know, I'm about, I'm about to have my fourth grandchild and I'm like, I ain't got enough money to leave all you guys something. You know, so I need to do I, I need to make more money. I, I ain't ready to die yet. I got I got more stuff to do. I got more things to accomplish. So that was like that's what what drove me. 
you know, or, or what drives me now is like, okay, I have to, I have to get things settled and situated for them when I leave. So I need to make sure that I'm doing things better and, and, and being more, I guess, restrictive in the things that I used to do. You know, I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't care. Like whatever, everybody's going to die. It's going to happen until somebody says you're going to die. And it's like, Oh, what, huh? Huh? What, what? Oh, hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. What did you say? Okay. No, I ain't ready for that yet. So that's kind of like my, when I was told and it was like, Holy crap. Really? Oh no, nah, I can't do that. This is fucked up. I got, I got to do something different. I got to change some things. So that's, that's kind of where I went. And I think that it, a lot of it has to do. I think about Star Wars and some of the um, and some of the underlying meanings behind the movies and in the Clone Wars and in Rebels and stuff. You know, the things that they were fighting for, that hope and that things. I really look at them underlying meanings of things in my general life now. Before it was just you know it's fun to watch, it's fun to you know talk about, it's fun to collect the memorabilia and all that stuff. But to really think about what the meaning is, like in the beginning of every Rebels episode. They put a great saying that has something to do with that episode or something that you can generalize and use in your everyday life. So that was like one of the things that that like I started triggering all them things started triggering in my head. Like, oh, that's what that's what that meant. I need to do that. That's what that meant. I need to do that. So that's kind of where I went. I mean, it's so it's like Joseph Campbell, right? This idea of mythology. There are these big stories within it. And they're all the big stories that we have in one of those big stories. Kyle, it's Kyle's story we're running into. And Garrison and CJ and and I will be like a secondary character or a third character, maybe someone who even just walks by. But then you go to that person, you go to CJ, say, or go to Garrison, and your story is like some interesting offshoot of that. And we're all kind of part of this big um, universe, right? This big right. picture of of what makes um, life really complete and the world complete. And I think um, like the idea of world with a, a small W, not a, a capital right. W. But it I think about that. It seems kind of to me that you view your acting not just as like a job, but as storytelling and almost like an art. Yes. Right? Is it, yeah. Am I getting that right? That's yes. the major yes. vibe I'm getting. Yeah. Like every character has these subtle emotions or these gray areas that you were talking about yeah. and how every person in life is kind of like that. And every person has their own story and we can relate to that. And so when you're acting, you're trying to convey that and kind of give someone art that they can self-reflect and I empathize with as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, the goal is always like, we all have different circumstances, right? Like I won't, um, I can't officially be in, I don't know what it's like to be Kyle or to be you or to be CJ. I'm, but I have like, I mean, like, so I grew up in a really, really white town in Indiana and my brother and I were the only different colored people. And always the thing that I felt was we're all really, we all love, we all hate, we all cry. We all, you know, we all have these similar, like uh, these similar feelings. Like I have stuff in common mm -hmm. with you guys, even though we're all across the world or the country from each other. So if we can capture that thing that is um, that is three dimensional and is um, allows other people to come in and be a part of the story in a way that, you know, you're in Arizona. Right. So you're not going to be part of maybe a story of someone who lives in England, but you could put yourself in there if they have an issue with their dad or if they, um, you know, have a new baby or like whatever, like there are things that, that I think is just the magic of being an actor and getting to then be part of telling stories in that way. So. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. I just think it's like, it's a, there aren't a lot of things you get to do that, um, you get to be kind of a mirror for people. Right. And it's, I think it's a, when you get to do it, like, you know, it's not always easy to get to do it in the, in, you know, you don't always get to play a character that people respond to like Ursa Ren or even like mm -hmm. Lauren. Um, I remember I was at a publicity event and this woman came up to me and she had, she had a baby, a two-year-old who was at the children's hospital, I'm going to cry, with a brain tumor. 
And she said the only thing that kept her going was she would put on the television above her daughter and they would sit in bed together and she would watch Scandal. And, you know, maybe she couldn't put herself in Kerry Washington's, you know, as Olivia, the amazing Olivia Pope. And maybe she couldn't put herself as Melly or as um, Fitz or, or, but she was like, there were other characters in there. She's like, I like, so my character is bullied all the time, right? By mm. Melly. And she's like, oh, I remember when I had this crappy boss who used to treat me like shit. And they can, um, that's like, in, you know, as an actor, you kind of are like, oh, I want to play this, like, oh, the character who's like Darth Vader, who no one, you know, like, right. oh. <laughs> and um, sometimes, like, your mirror gets, it's, it's surprising then to see, oh, someone saw this. And I mean, like, always the thing I liked about Ursa Wren, you know, now Star Wars is owned by Disney, right? And Disney right. always has, like, they're always missing mothers in all these, like, fairy tales, <laughs> right? Or yeah. there's super bitchy stepmoms and they're always <laughs> competing for the uh, for the energy like for the attention of the dad but mm -hmm. i loved in this it was like a mom and a daughter and that's i mean like those are complicated relationships yeah. it's love and it's you know messy and there's control issues there and and especially you know you're like i remember ursa has this line to sabine that it's I'm proud of your um, your strength and your fight, but it's also frustrating. You're the one I have to worry about. I don't have to worry about your brother, uh -huh. right? And I, I love the fact that, wow, I get to be part of telling this uh, mom-daughter story that people can see is complicated, but there's still love there. So. I mean, it's like, one of my favorite parts is when, like, when she snitches on Sabine, and Sabine's like, did you really tell the Empire we was here? What are you doing? And then she had to come out and save her. That was like one of my best parts. She was like, I didn't want to, but I had to. You know, it's, we kind of in this situation. Yeah, and I'm looking like, out for the entire, the entire clan, not just not you. Not just you, right? Which is what, like you, right, as a dad and a granddad, you're not just looking out for one of your kids. You have to look out for the big picture of what your family or like what CJ, you were saying about the history of your family in Scotland, right? They're looking for the clan, like literally the clan, like keeping everybody safe and alive so that you can go on to um, to have your people live a good life. And um, sometimes a single person has to get sacrificed for that, you know, or what we think is sacrifice, right? Like ultimately, and you guys will remember this better than I do, I'm sure. But I, I, if I remember correctly, Ursa is like, I had to do this to save you and to save the rebels. Like, but you don't know, like, I, all I'm thinking is Sabine is like, you, my mom doesn't love me as much as she loves these other people. But mm. you don't see the big picture behind it, you know? Yep. I, I love this, the, this, I guess, energy and intention and emotion that you put into your characters. And I think it Fine. shows thank you. how you think it through. I, I love it. This is great. It's oh, so refreshing and it, it makes us like, yes, like this is why I love Star Wars or this is why I love this show this is why i love this character it, it's yeah love it thank you <laughs> thank you well thank you guys it's um it's lovely i'm mean, like i always think it's so hilarious because you know i get fan letters and i get them from for star wars i get them a lot of times from dads and their sons like their little kids are like i was a huge star wars fan when i was a kid and now i have a kid so i mm -hmm. watch these movies with my kids and so I get these letters, you know, my son is a really big fan of uh, Rebels or whatever. And then I get these letters from uh, Scandal women. And, you know, they're always like women and they're always like, you know, we love Lauren. We, you know, we wish she was on more, whatever they, they say. But it's amazing that it's kind of both in this situation, which is kind of wild. I mean, yeah. like I, I've always <laughs> thought that they were two different sides kind of. And it's it is, interesting that in this situation, it is this, I'm like it's this, this wild. Well, it was like I was talking earlier before, before we started recording, you know, I like, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So we're like, I like, I'm watching scandal with my wife and like, Honesty is that's more of a, like a chick 
you know, you're doing thing. it because you love your wife. Yeah. But I'm watching it with my wife and I hear your voice and I'm like, I know that voice from somewhere. So I'm like watching all the Star Wars movies. I'm watching everything and I can't figure it out. And then I was literally up here. I was watching Clone Wars because on Wednesdays we do um, uh, Rebel recap. So we're watching. I'm watching Rebels. And we're only supposed to watch one episode, but I've seen it so many times that I'm watching everything. And I heard the voice and I'm like, that's who it is. That's who it is. And I run, I'm like running up and downstairs. My wife's looking at me like, like, what the hell is wrong with you? I said, I figured it out. She was like, you figured what out? I said, I figured out who her voice is. It's Ursa Ran on Rebels. And she's like, who are you talking about? And I'm like, Lauren on Scandal. That's who it is. And she was like, so I played it for her. And she was like, it's not the same person. I said, I'm telling you it's the same person. <laughs> so, of course, I go into wait for the credits. I go to the credits and I look at the credits. And then, there you are in the credits. And I typed in your name. And I'm like, I knew it was her. I knew it. And she was like, I don't know how you figured that out. I have no idea how you figured it out. I still don't know how you figured it out. I'm really impressed. <laughs> it was just, it was like the, 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 the nuances of the things that you said. It was the way you said a word or, or, or the way you said something that just it just I just knew that voice. And I was like, that's that's who it is. And, Dude, and I for me, I had no idea. And because they're such dra- they're different. They're so characters. different, they're right? They're different, different worlds. Like drastically. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm good at figuring that thing out. And then I told them, I was like, we have to get her on the show. We have to get her on the show. That's like. We, we got to invite her, and then they were like, all right, let's do it. So that's why I got on Instagram and, and hit you up on Instagram. I was like, okay, I hope this is the right person. I, I, I <laughs> you hope, know, it, it's so funny. I don't, I'm really not very good at um, looking like, I sometimes forget to look at the DMs to see if anyone has kind of contacted. I just, um, it's not just like my, it's just not where my brain goes. But it was some yeah. reason, I think a friend was like, oh, I sent you something on a DM. So I went on there and that's when I saw it. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. So. Well, thank you to that friend, whoever you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really appreciate that. <laughs> well, either way, either way, it's the damn honor to have you on. Aww, and thank you. you to that friend yeah. also. You probably because. shared like a funny TikTok reel and then we got the DM response. So either way, thank you to the friend and thank you. <laughs> Dude, I don't know how to do TikTok. I've never done TikTok. I'm like, so I'm, I'm telling you, I really am like a, a Luddite with this stuff. So. Well, and then so like on my other podcast, I've invited some um, some uh, some other actors and some other writers on there and. You know, it's so hard to know who is real and who is not, even with the chat mark on the Instagram yeah. and stuff like that. Because I've had people, oh, yeah. And then some crazy man is on the screen like, who are you? You're not oh my God. whoever really? this person is. I know what this person looks like. I read all their books. I know exactly who they are. This is not you. You're not him. Or you're not her. Because <laughs> I had a guy say they was playing as a, as a writer and it was a female writer in this this guy looked like he's living in his mom's basement is on my screen. Like, who are you? So it was like, it's really like when you asked, I'm like, oh, I so hope it's her. Because <laughs> I so hope it's so. her. Because, it, man, there's there's some crazy people out there that just, and, and especially when dealing with social media. Social media, yeah, that's, it's, it's, yeah. it's I tried to avoid, blessing. other than posting, I tried to avoid social media as much as possible. And you got to post because you got to promote and, that's just one of the things that you have to do, but all the comments and all the stuff, oh man, it just, I it. Can't, you know, oh, this is actually, so when I was on Scandal, I remember uh, Tony had said in the olden days, Hollywood, you know, uh, studios had their own huge publicity departments and they would kind of control the publicity of what you did. And you, they would say, you know, you can't do this. This is how you're going to dress. This is how your hair is going to look. These are the places you're going to go and do your publicity. But we don't live in that world anymore, right? We live in a world where it's individually based. And so you do kind of, I mean, like, I like Instagram because I like photographs. Um, and I'm, I limit myself to social media. So I'm like on there and I'm like, I see people's pretty pictures and I like, 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 and then I get off. And Facebook has always been interesting just because there are so many people I was out of touch with who Mm -hmm. found me on there. And so it's kind of cool to see people you knew when you were a kid and be like, wait, that's so crazy. Um, 
like uh, a woman I knew when I was really, really little, her mom and dad were kind of like godparents when my brother and I were really little. She ended up sending me pictures of like when I was three or four years old. And that, I'm like stuff like that's always really cool about social media or like this even. Right. Um, but then there's, you know, there's many, many negatives to it, too. Right. So it's a mix you just of have to learn. Like I, I've had to learn because I've been between YouTube and and doing podcasts, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. Oh, and wow. I just learned to just you you just have to ignore a lot of stuff because yeah. there's a lot of haters. It out is there. a very difficult thing when you're running like one of the this like I do the Instagram is very hard not to want to respond and be like, hey, you know what? Fuck you, bro. That's not even funny. That's really mean. Like, how, how dare you say that? Like, it, it's very difficult. I've had, like, there's been times where Kyle and I have gotten on the phone with each other. And I'm like, dude, you got to. I don't know if I can do this right now. Like I'm about to like blow up on this dude and his DMs. And he's like, no, don't worry about it. Just block it out. And I'm like, I don't know how to. I'm a very like defensive person when it comes to my, you know, my team. And I don't. You know, don't get the bash on Kyle. You don't get the bash on Garrison. You sure? So don't get the. I mean, Who's you get bash, bash on, on me. me. What? I'm perfect. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Calm down, <laughs> Vince. Well, though, we don't need this. But My I'm thing curious is this. because oh. I, I I thought Star the Star Wars community was pretty tight though like that you wouldn't get people who or well, is am get, I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. You get you get fans that'll not like what we say mm. and attack us for like uh, it's truthful stuff because we we'll, we'll come out and we we share our honest opinion. And there are some people that just don't want to hear it and they come after you. But most of the time, they're just people that are they're clickbait pretty much. They want you to feed into the argument and they want to get that rise out of you so they can be like, look, he isn't they are They're not as cool as they're, they say they are. They're not as fun as they say they are. And they're just trying to do that to gain popularity. Yeah. It's a popularity contest in the Instagram world. It's who can get the most likes, who can get the most follows, it's who like can become bad verified. high school. Yeah, yeah, there's clicks, but most of us Star Wars fans, we come together and we're really good with each other. It's just you get some of those bad apples. There's always a bad apple in a group. And uh, you, you'll catch one or two of them here and there. I mean, we've been pretty good. We haven't had a lot of bad apples on our Instagram lately. I mean, we've had like one at a time, CJ, he, he calls me and he's like, dude, this dude is just like he's telling us that we're not real Star Wars fans. And I'm like. Why are you even paying attention to this person? They don't know us. Oh, they have see. never sat down and had a conversation with us. They've never been on the show with us. They don't even know who we are. So don't let that stuff bother you. I said, just ignore it. You know, I, it's funny because people get mad at me when they say bad stuff. I like their stuff. I like Yeah, it. I know. It's, he's, <laughs> he, he doesn't help me, though, because he'll go in on the Instagram and they'll say something in the comments and he'll heart it. <laughs> and I'm like, and they like keep it. going, and he'll heart every single one of them. And Kill it's like, him with dude, love. yeah, killing you... with love. That's kind of awesome, though. Kill him with and love. I've, We're the Star know, within, Wars community. We love everybody. Within due time, like I learned how to like just shake it off. Like, like my my dad said it. And he's like, there's always a bad apple in a group. You just you know once you find them, ignore them. And I have found with Instagram, there, there's, there's, there's a group of bad apples that like to hang out with each other. <laughs> I swear, because they all say the same thing. It's literally almost verbatim what they say in our comments. And it's like, you know what? You guys are dumb. Like, do you see the four thousand comments of positivity and then your three comments of negative argument of bullcrap? Like, you are outnumbered by a whole fandom. You are probably not even fans. You're just wanting the attention. You're seeking attention from a group of people that could care less about what you think. And then you get some of those guys that are really passionate and uh, the guy that says something negative and the guy that's really passionate, they go at it for like three hours. So my phone's just lighting up. Uh And it's like, ugh. Okay. That's annoying when you have notifications turned on and they just are going off in the comments. <laughs> it's just these two people. You got the bad apple and then you have the really passionate fan that's like defending us. Who's trying us to defend and, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who's defending us and defending themselves. And then you have the bad apple just saying obscene, obscene shit. And then you get that one guy and then he gets his other friends involved. So you're getting 40 notifications within an hour. And it's like, I'm going to let this play because it's drawing attention to the post, but geez do you not see what you're saying like how do you not get bored oh you always how get the not, cool ones 
You get the have cool ones saw- that go on there and say how how much they love Garrison. Garrison's so attractive. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I like Vince Solo. I love Vince Solo. Then it goes to your head, and you're like, "Why am I not an actor yet? What the fuck?" Give yourself time. You're still young. You know the one thing that was very unsettling was like I when we start picking up, we start gaining popularity a little bit. I went to GameStop and I got recognized and I was like, no, I don't like that. I don't like, I just want to come in here and buy my nerdy things and leave. I don't want to talk for 40 minutes. Like I told y'all I, y'all was going to have to worry about that. I told y'all. Like, well, well, that was, that was, my, that was my first that, interaction. It was like, I don't know, dude, I don't want you recognizing my wife and my kids. Like I, and I've had my both. I've had my wife and my kids on the show and, and, and me I was at McDonald's. Years ago, I was at McDonald's, and it was the first time that I, I, I walked into the McDonald's, and I'm sitting there, and it's me and my daughters and my wife, and we're all sitting there eating, and my uh, I think my youngest son, I think my oldest son was with some of his friends. But some people came up and asked me for my autograph, and I'm like, uh, what? They're like, can you, can, can, you you're, you're Kyle with Kamikaze Vapes, right? Because I used to do a vaping channel but when vaping first started coming out, and because they helped me quit smoking, so I said hey, i want to do youtube and it's positive let me do this so i uh so we're sitting there and these two girls come up and they ask me for my autograph and i'm like what the hell and they were like you're kyle from kamikaze rapes and i'm like yeah and they were like can we get your autograph and i'm like i'm a dude on youtube what are you talking about you get my autograph i ain't nobody what are you like someday, like someday. but i told you guys, <laughs> he's, he's like maybe one day i'll walk into a church <laughs> <laughs> A taco joint, me. and someone will be like, "I know him." <laughs> well, and like, and now, it, it was fun. We like we went to Comic Con. What was it? It was before May because May we went to Disneyland. But I think it was like maybe February. It was our first Comic Con after COVID had finally like opened up, and we were. And my wife likes to go and advertise the show. Well, I I'm standing there with the kids. And my daughter's freaking out because she's seeing Ahsoka everywhere, and this like these clone trooper guys come and walk up to me, these five or first guys. And they're like, you're CJ from lightsaber radio. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> hi. And they're like, Oh dude, your show's so fucking funny. Like you, the stuff you guys say is just priceless. And we love how passionate you are about clones. And I was like, cool. Um, it's not just clones though. I like Mandalorians and then the Mando Mercs and mm-hmm. like, He's like, oh, this is really, this is, this is like the, doing the podcast was, it's surreal. And like, I was a fanboy of Kyle because of his podcast. And for him to actually like, we had a two hour, what was it? Two hour Skype call? Yeah, two hours, something like that. And we just talked and I was like, I really talked to fucking Kyle. This is, this, wow. What? <laughs> like, it was really like, it just, it's honestly just an honor to be on the show. And I, I keep saying that every so often and it's, it's just awesome. And then having you on, it's just like, it's crazy to think. Like, at first I was like, I don't know if this is going to pick up. We're pretty, we can get pretty raunchy from time to time. <laughs> and I, you, dude, I'm, I'm not once have I gotten recognized from the podcast. I've only been recognized one time, and that was from a, a musical I did in high school. <laughs> hey, I a that's, the, that's the guy. right direction, and though. That's, that's the right direction. I played direction. a 40 year old guy, and the lady thought I was like, she's like, you're 20? What? And she was like so shocked that I wasn't actually 40. That is good acting, though. Um, hey, good makeup. <laughs> it was like Leonardo DiCaprio when he, or was it Leo? Or yeah, I think it was Leo when he played in What's Eating Gilbert's Grapes, right? Was it Leo? Yeah. And Johnny Depp, both of them. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And he, he played the kid with the Down syndrome, and everybody at the red carpet thought he had actual down syndrome and leo's like no nah, dude it was just a role i was playing like, <laughs> i'm actually like i don't have that medical dis- i don't have that that mental disorder of sort and everybody was he should have won an oscar for that because like the whole red carpet was in shock that he wasn't okay. yeah I, so any, i'm comparing you to leo that? garrison <laughs> i'm comparing you to leo Right, I, I really could be. I mean, come on, wait, sign me already. I'm just kidding. Hey, you haven't seen me and Leo in the same room, so I mean, do you have any experiences like that? I mean, you've been in a, some pretty big. Yeah, things, you've been so. in a lot of work. Yeah, that was where know, I was segueing to. Oh, uh, you know, I think uh, I think everybody who's a fan of like you know the animation stuff is different. People don't. Right. I mean, like I think people don't really think that I'm like, or maybe Ooh. they do that I'm like Ursa Ren. I think that would be awesome if I was like that. Um, 
with scandal, it happened a lot. People were like, oh, this is how you are. And then, you know, a lot of times as an actor, then you get kind of typed into that thing right, too, if right. you're memorable in that. Or like I was, uh, I was on a sitcom that I had an Indian accent. So then a lot mm -hmm. of times people are like, wait, you don't have an Indian accent in real life. I'm like, no, I'm from Indiana. You know, like, so, <laughs> so I, I, I think that that happens a lot. Like, you know, uh, when you play like a super innocent character, people assume that you're really innocent. Right. I mean, the thing that's cool about all of this though, I know it's kind of, it is freaky. You know, you're walking someplace, you're trying to live your life going to McDonald's or you're at like, you know, you want to be a fan at Comic-Con. You want to see the people you want to see. Right. And then all of a sudden people are like, wait, I know. And you're like, oh my God, you know, like for girls, I'm always like, oh my God, do I have a booger in my nose? <laughs> <laughs> I, like my hair looks okay. Like I have, you know, okay. Is my and, hair cut straight? Because yeah, I don't want to take a photo. Straight. I got to make sure it's done because they're going to say whatever they're going to say about it. Like, oh, she's, you know, she's a, uh, taller than what I thought, or she's, you know, fatter than where, you know, whatever they're going to say. And that's where um, it's so cool, though, that obviously it's affected people because they wouldn't. I mean, like, truthfully, and I remember someone because I'm super neurotic and I get super I'm very sensitive. And I remember I did a play in Chicago and it was a huge review that it got. And I was the only person they hated in the play. And the um, the the reviewer spent like two paragraphs saying what a terrible actor I was and, and all this. And you can't help but take it personally. You can't because it's you, you know. Right. But then also a friend of mine once said that if you believe the good stuff, if you choose to be like, oh, these guys are fans or whatever of Ursula or Ursa or whatever, then you have to believe the bad stuff, too. So, and that's sometimes when you make a strong, like you make a strong choice, you show who you are, people, and especially these days, right? Everybody feels like they can have an opinion about something yeah. and they especially have a place. Instagram and right, Twitter they can and all that. Put it on the internet. Um, that's when you kind of are like, uh, okay, so uh, if I can throw out the really, like uh, be happy about the really good stuff and about people like affecting in a positive way. And understanding that the negative stuff is they're dealing with their own. Everybody's got their own garbage. You know, we don't live in other people's shoes to know mm -hmm. why. Like there's this big joke among actors. A lot of times you're like, well, I guess I didn't get that part because I look like that dude's ex-wife. You know, like there's things that you don't, um, what? you don't, yeah, it happens all the time, right? You're like, yeah. oh, or I look like the cousin that they hated or something like that, you know? And so I think that that's kind of like, it's, it, if you can, and it's hard to do, dude, it's hard to do, to separate that it's about other people, the, the negative stuff, right. um, but it can get kind of, you know, it's, it's hard. But also, if you love it enough, like you guys love doing this enough, that it becomes worth it. And then, like all the people who are like super excited and cool about it, offset the few negative parts of it. That's a. I bet you wish you could uh, get, um, go back now and tell that reviewer, "Look at me now, motherfucker! What the hell is good I'm doing now? I bet you didn't think that that was going to happen. Time out, my bad. Yeah, I was super super radio. <laughs> I didn't act for a year because of that review. No. Ah, uh, yeah. I should well, find his email. I'll email him for you. Thank like you. you. Dick. We'll, we'll go at it. We'll, yeah, we'll, all so three of us will be like, how, "How dare you?" <laughs> but I mean, like, I think. But you know, when you're, I was so young and and really like sensitive, and it was public, and and you know, yeah, and then you kind of are like, okay, well, is it going to stop me from doing what I want to do? I hope not. You know, if it does, that's the greatest crime of it. Yeah. You know, well, that's like one of the one of the things that like I live by this this creed. I will never fail because I refuse to quit. And I just I live that that's everything I do. I put that 100 percent of energy into it. Like, you know, last Wednesday, it was kind of messed up. CJ wasn't able to come on the show. He was at, he was had to work. It was so and, messed up, dude. And then <laughs> I can't Garrison, help that. Garrison's like, dude, I'm in school. I'm not going to be there in time for the show. I, I'll jump in. So I'm like the first. 15 minutes of the show, I'm like here by myself. 
And I was just like, ah, don't worry about it, guys. I got it. <laughs> I'll just do it. Oh, I'll figure out something to say. I don't know what I'm going to say. But, you know, and then I just started inviting other people from the live stream on. Like, hey, who wants to come on the show with me? Just started inviting people. Everybody was coming on. We were just talking about everything. And it worked out. Yeah, and but, it probably ended up being kind of an interesting show, right? And different oh, yeah. than what you expected. And it's just, there. there's no failure. Only people that fail is the people that quit. Yeah, or people don't try, right? So that's been kind of like the, my model for like the last 10 years. Like I'm not giving up, you know, if something doesn't work out, I'll just try something else, but I'm going to keep doing, I love entertaining. I love being on, on YouTube and on podcasts. I, I, I enjoy doing it and I'm going to keep doing it until I'm going to find something that works. And here we are. It's working. <laughs> it's working. Cause the very first podcast I did was a, with me and another friend and it was called man axiom. And we just talked about being men, like the stuff that men go through. And it did pretty well, but then I moved here and he was like, I don't want to do it remotely. If we're not in the same room, I don't want to do it. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess I got to find something else. And I was like, well, I love Star Wars. Let's let's talk about some Star Wars. So that's how it all came together. Uh-huh. I would love to do this podcast in person together. That'd be so fun. Oh, yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's, that's the goal. It. That's the that's, a, that's goal. a goal. Yeah, you guys have to like that will be what you especially now that everything is opening up. That would yeah. be like a good, and when you just had your 100th anniversary, right? That yep. maybe that's like the 125th show is like together. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. Everything. Oh, I mean, the I plan, the stuff. real plan is Disney World. I'm not yeah. going to lie to you guys. That's my goal oh, is Disney World with a couple mics in hand, walking around being straight nerds with each other. Live at Disney World. That's our 200th episode. Well, mm -hmm. and, and honestly, I didn't think we was going to grow this fast. I thought, you know, I, you know, people, there's fans, but there's so many different Star Wars podcasts. That's why we wanted to do something different. I said, man, we're just going to have fun. We're going to talk about everything. Star Wars, if we bring up other stuff. Like, we literally had a smash and pass of Star Wars. So it was like, and that was crazy show because we're talking about Star Wars character. And they're like, all right, smash or pass Chewbacca. And I'm just saying smash everybody. I'm smashing everybody. It's a, it's a Star Wars character. I don't care. Not gay, but whatever. We're, we're smash or pass. We're doing it. And it, it, it just, that, that episode just did really good. And it was like people just really enjoyed the honesty, especially when it came to the series. Like, most people come on there and, like, the book of Boba Fett just lacked story. It did. It's not, it just wasn't, it wasn't one of my favorite Star Wars. And I, we were just honest about it. And I was like, yeah, I didn't really like it. And people really responded to it. People were like, yeah, you know, I didn't really care for it too. Because a lot of times people have this feeling, you're a Star Wars fan, you must like everything. And it's like, right. no, that's not reality. There's stuff that you're not going to like. And you should be able to be honest about the things that you don't like and, and the things that you do like. And that's the, that's where a lot of people they lack that that ability to just say that because it's like oh you're not a star wars fan unless you like everything in star wars and it's that that's not that's not the reality of the world that's not yeah, how that's not really realistic are. that's like being okay garrison and i we're we like notre dame that's like liking notre dame all the time i'm sorry we're gonna hate our team like we're gonna hate what's going on <laughs> we're gonna like last night we lost last night it was so sad yeah too hey, soon, bro. Too yeah, soon. I, I know. Trust me. I didn't get to finish the game because when I left Texas Roadhouse with the family, we were up and everything was going great. And he's now turned the camera off. We were up and we were doing great. I And, and this morning I found out we lost and I'm kind of bummed out. But it's like you're going to have those realistic moments where you're going to like the team and everything's going good and everything's happy. And then we're going to lose. And it's gonna suck, and we're gonna like be like, "Damn it, we should, you know, we should have never picked up that three star recruit. We should have picked up that four star from like Florida and like all the, you know, all the fun well, stuff." Just, and it's the same thing with Star Wars. Like, I love Boba Fett, but I don't like the show as much as I should have. It's a big universe, universe, right? Yeah. It's a huge right. universe, so there's gonna be things that you like and things that you don't like in it. It's humongous. Well, one of the things that like, so we do like. On each episode, like we did it on uh, the end of Mandalorian season two, we did it on uh, um, the Bad Batch, and then we've been doing it on Rebels, is we scale it. And like we get people in the comments that'll say 10 for 10, like, dude, that's perfect. They ain't nothing perfect. They're, I could find a thousand mistakes that, that was made in, in this episode. I like the episode, 
But there's also, and I had to explain to them, there's a difference between being a critic and being a fan. As a critic, you have to look at, okay, well, there's this point where their mouths ain't moving, but they're talking. Somebody messed up in animation. That's being a critic. And then there's the part of, as a fan, like, well, I still like the episode. The episode was great. You know, you have to separate those two things. And as us being a show and giving us our, 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 our honest opinion, we have to sit back and say, okay, as a critic, this is the mistakes that I've seen. Like in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, I do not understand for the life of me why the camera is shaking the whole time. Like, did this dude have Tourette's or something? I the didn't cameraman? realize this. So fun fact, <laughs> Kyle points this out and we're like, what, episode four? Yeah, something like that, episode four. And he points this out after we talk about it, and I'm like, did it really shake that bad? And we go to the next one, and I'm seeing the camera shake, and I'm like, damn you. I was was like, damn you, Kyle. And every episode after that, I was like, now I can't get past the camera shake. Because that, it was, it was, it was a serious problem. It was like, the guy was carrying, like, uh, carrying it on his chest, and just playing around like oh well, well, this would be a good angle or the, oh, maybe shake right now and as somebody that's done uh, some short films and, and and done some directing and camera work you know there's certain points in time that you do camera shake when something's happening and you want to show an emotion or you know if it's during the earthquake of course the shit camera's gonna shake because earth is really not shaking. <laughs> you know what i'm saying but just to do it all the time they did it all the time like why are you doing it? you're just like zooming up on this character Nothing's happening but the camera's shaking. Like, what, did this, did the camera guy have Tourette's or something? What's going on, man? Does he got like Parkinson's disease? Why is he shaking all the time? Wait, did you guys ask anyone? Were you able to find out why they nah. chose the camera? We, haven't, we yeah. haven't had anybody on that was on Obi Wan yet, and we haven't had that ability. I mean, with David, I mean, the camera, the camera quality in Boba Fett was great. They're, they're, it shook in the right moment. It panned somewhat in the right moment. <laughs> I bet Kyle probably knows more about that than I do. I, I like listen to the music score and the blaster sounds and stuff. But Kyle's really good with the camera and noticing when things aren't panning right or he well, he's just good all around that whole spectrum, but he's gotten me paying attention to like the music score. If it was did that music ease into the situation better or that blaster sound was like two seconds after the blaster fired. Like that's inaccurate. Like he's got me realizing a lot of things lately. Wow. But that's just, you know, that's the difference between, like I said, be, be a critic, you're criticizing everything, not just the story or not just the acting or not just the, you know, you're criticizing, you know, did the camera guy do it? Is the lighting right? Is, you know, is everything set up and looking correct? Is the CGI falling into place right? Like CJ said, did the, when somebody shoots, does the blaster bolt come off and then we hear the sound three seconds later? Like that didn't even... Because these things are what throw you off. It throws you out of the moment of the scene. And so as a critic, as somebody just criticizing a show and giving your honest opinion, you got to look for all those things. But then at the same time, you're a fan. So you got to look at it as a fan. And you have, to, you have to know how to separate those two things. And that's some of the biggest back feed that we get is like, I didn't notice those things before. Well, you know, I just, I've done a lot of camera work. I've done a lot of stuff. So I have had the ability to learn these things because you have to fix it. You know, when you shoot something and you, you know, you shoot a short film or something like that and you're, you're doing this film and you notice, you have to notice these things and edit because if you don't, then you're putting out bad content. So you have to know these, notice these little things. And I don't know, I, I, I'm probably the worst at it because my wife hates me because we'll be sitting there watching like we were watching Black Panther and there's actually a part where they're when they're falling down to the train thing that's going by. There's actually a part where you can see the blue screen. It flashes by and like I literally put it on my computer and like, went, and I'm like dude, they, they somebody missed that. <laughs> they need to fire that editor. Disney got all that money. And they this editor screwed this all up. But nobody else in the world probably noticed that like. It, it's, it's something that I just noticed because I've done it before, and I, you know, other other people just done camera work and and editing and stuff like that. They probably they probably noticed it, but the rest of the, a normal fan would never notice that stuff. Some people but, have eyes for that, right? Some people can yeah. see that stuff. Other people can hear stuff, right? Like uh, I, I, there's something that I have always that I can hear when people's accents go out. Like, so it could be like, I'm like, oh, that person's pretending to be American, but clearly they're British or clearly there's something else because I can hear when they say something. But then I mean, like, we all have different, like my, my boyfriend, my partner, he 
we'll watch something and all of a sudden he'll pause it and he's like, see, look at there. They have, they didn't match that shot. I'm like, mm-hmm. just stop. Like, put that back on. I was in the middle of watching about this <laughs> hurricane or whatever. My wife does the same whatever. thing. My wife does the exact same thing. Like, <laughs> she's sitting there like, why are you criticizing? Just enjoy the show. Exactly. Why are you not enjoying watching the movie? You're just criticizing the whole movie. Well, I, that's kind of what I do, you know? <laughs> it's just, uh, and it's just. That's enjoyment for you. Criticize. Yeah. It's just one of those things that I, I just found myself, I do because I've done it. You know, when you're editing and you're and you're making film, you notice every little thing because you have to notice it. If you don't notice it, then you put out something and then everybody else notices it and then you get a, a million comments mad. on on Instagram talking about you're an idiot. You missed this whole part. Like, oh man, God, I don't want to hear this shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's it, it's just one of those things. But and that's I think that's one of the reasons that we grew the way we and grew fast because like my first youtube channel it took me like two years to even get a thousand subscribers we're already over a thousand and we're at a year we've been really doing this for a year we there's a hundred app and we're already over a thousand subscribers and we got uh, the the instagram is growing everything is growing and it's growing rapidly we're getting more and more views on all of our videos and it's 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 one of those things it's like okay i didn't expect this to happen this fast but it's just because of our honesty, because we look at things in in a realistic moment. And then we have Garrison, the the four guy. He gives everything a four. Four. Five. <laughs> four. <laughs> like, dude, really? That was a great episode. Four. Like, <laughs> three. Three <laughs> he he is the he is the show's antagonist. <laughs> everything gotta be a four. He's the villain of the he, No, he's the devil's advocate because he'll yeah. point out the good things and then he ends with the bad things. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, I like this, but that sucked. <laughs> that, that really, that, that's what got me. Therapists tell you to say that. First, start with the good stuff so that people are like, oh, yeah, I feel really good. And then you can say, by the way, this didn't work. We got we got 45 years of Star Wars, and this dude still complains about the stormtroopers not being able to hit anything. They've never been God able to hit anything. That's just like, that's his every show you got to complain about this, really? <laughs> that's his favorite thing to talk on too he's like really that that th- that was point blank and they still couldn't hit it <laughs> like, that's garrison's favorite thing it's like garrison right. we know it's a it's right. a long sta- long lasting joke it's never mm-hmm. going to die <laughs> george lucas wrote it into the script stormtroopers can't hit anything but we're going to talk about them like they can um let's see we're at uh, hour and 41 minutes you want to get to the impossible quiz because okay. ain't no point in doing this is a recorded episode everybody's gonna know this is recorded so ain't no we can't really do the news right. i was just thinking about that like what, what news are we going to talk about because it's going to be outdated by the time the yeah, yeah. saturday Joe, comes. Yeah. yeah and what's changed since yesterday yeah nothing and i, I mean the holiday probably. weekend everything's slow so mm. yeah all right so impossible quiz <laughs> Yep, impossible quiz. Oh, yay. Stop right there, you rebel scum. Prepare yourself for the Star Wars impossible quiz. Blast them. The knee pads. The knee pads mess me up every okay, time. Why do you every complain time. about this every, every episode? You, dude, you can't give me crap for criticizing Stormtrooper shooting if you just criticize this every time. Hey, I'm not giving you crap. You just, you point out every time in rebels the knee pads, the knee, when that one stormtrooper kneels oh, down God. the knee pads on the leg standing and it's like that makes no sense why are you kneeing kneeling down on the one that doesn't have the knee pad like you messed up putting on your armor that day like i don't know when i was you? making it i just found the clips and i put it together i, I didn't no, create I, the, the, it <laughs> looks great yeah, yeah. let's just it's get just to the, the knee pad <laughs> everything looks great except for the knee pad for some reason Okay, so on the impossible quiz, I'm, uh, I made this a lot easier. It's all Star Wars Rebels and Clone Wars stuff. And a lot of it has to do with uh, Clan Ren, So, Bro, if she gets on and beats us, I'm going to be so embarrassed. <laughs> There's no way that's going to happen. But we'll see. And you know the rules. If you don't have the answer, say something funny. Okay. Got to be something funny. Say yeah, something, something stupid. Funny. Okay. Yeah, something stupid. Most a lot. likely it'll be something stupid. I can't promise funny. <laughs> Okay, what Mandalorian clan did Clan Ren align itself with during the Empire era? Imperial Saxton. era. Huh? Clan Saxton. Nope. Saxton. Uh, 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 you're glitching, Garrison. Sorry. We got. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> Can you repeat the question? Okay, what Mandalorian clan did Clan Wren align itself with during the Imperial era? Yeah, I don't, dude, I don't know. I, it wasn't I can't the Kreese, even think of anything funny. Because Kree's clan was practically killed out and ran off. I think I'm going to really embarrass myself. I have no clue. Hey, I didn't know the answer until I, until I was reading the question or when I was creating the question. Yeah, I'm stuck. Clan. Okay, it's Clan Vizsla. Vizsla. Really? Yep. The Vizsla? Yeah. I thought Vizsla was, I thought, hmm. And that's what it says on Wikipedia. I think that's a little Wikipedia. crap because the last one. <laughs> okay, question number right, two. Ursa Wren had two children. Yes. What was the name of her youngest child? <laughs> it's yeah, Sabine. Sabine was the youngest one. No, am I wrong? I'm wrong about my own child. You are a terrible mother. No, I'm joking. I mix them up. My bad. You forgot your kid's age. Dude, I can't even remember Ritesh's character's name. Tristan. Yeah, Thank Tristan. you, Tristan. That's right. It's, it's Tristan. Tristan, Tristan was the youngest child. Okay. While Sabine was a cadet in the Imperial Academy, she created an arc, arc pulse generator, which was capable of reacting to Mandalorian armor. What was that weapon called? A, a, a magnet? I don't flip it up. <laughs> <laughs> a magnet? <laughs> a meltinator. I don't, I don't know. It didn't melt everybody's armor. armor. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Wait, it wasn't uh, the sword they were trying to all get? <laughs> 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 the dark saber. No, it wasn't the dark saber. Okay, it was called the Duchess. Oh, the after Duchess Satine. Oh. Yep, it was called the Duchess. That makes sense. Okay, Clan Ren took part in a mission to rescue Ursa's husband from Imperial Prison Outpost. What was her husband's name? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot who I was married to. <laughs> no, I knew I, I, was, I was married. married to I, I knew know. I was married. Uh, what the hell was his name? Tris, uh, David. I'm going with David. I'm stuck on nope. David. His name nope. is Jeff. No, I don't think it was like a normal name, name like that. Mr. His name Red. Is Jeff. Mr. Huh? Red. <laughs> no, I'm going to go with Red. Mr. Red. Uh, Mr. Red. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's that partially way. correct. You know, I was trying to figure out and I looked it up and I was looking everywhere like was his was he like was he the Wren and married her no, or was it the other way around and he took her last name? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he took her last name. He's a bitch. Like, well, so this is what uh, Dave Filoni was telling me. It's that in Mandalorian culture, particularly in the um, in the arist aristocratic culture, the women were in charge. It was a matriarchal society. So he, like, she chose him. Like, it was kind of like she's kind of the uh, the aggressor in a way of it. Okay. So he had to take my last name. Hey, yeah, snatch me cool. up, sugar mama. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you royalty. <laughs> <laughs> His name was Alrich. Alrich oh, Wren. Or Alrich. Or, uh, it's A-L-R-I-C-H, so however you say it. I'm terrible with names, so. Okay, Ursa Wren was a human female Mandalorian warrior. Where was she born at? What planet was she born on? Conquered Dawn. Nope. Wouldn't she have been born? What the hell was Mandalore? Yeah. Nope. nope. But no, really? Nope. Well, it's a Mandalorian sector. There's, I think, thirty-five planets or thirty-five moons in a single planet. Actually, there's more planets than that in the system. Yeah, but all you guys just just relax, we're talking about okay? the main planet. We're thinking about this one. <laughs> the main planet uh, was Mandalore. Yeah, and, and then there was, was Concord Don was one of the moons. Yeah, but there was Cronus. also other planets. That was the name of the the, but that's not a planet. No, oh, Cronus is the planet she was born on. I was right. Yes. You were right. Woo! <laughs> yep, well, there you go. She's got a point. Yeah. Hey, there I'm tied go. with her. It's okay. She hasn't beaten me yet. Okay. <laughs> While Saw famously was trained in combat under Anakin Skywalker and Rex, who ultimately held the responsibility of introduction to guerrilla fighting and leadership? Ahsoka. Yep. Yep. That was quick. Oh, nice. Boy, at least you knew something, CJ. You, you ain't hey. been doing too well the last couple weeks. <laughs> I haven't. No, it's, I haven't been. 
Okay. It's so good because it's so good. It's, Who's gonna say what the Viet Cong? The Viet Cong. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like guerrilla warfare. We're not like, taking the history not, lesson. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in season six of the Clone Wars, episode thirteen, Darth Bane's spirit talks to Yoda on Morban. What actor voices Darth Bane? Uh, Sam Witwer. Nope. Mark Hamill. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's only two people that I can think about right out the can gate. Can you imagine that? Two. Like the the the, the, the leader of guess. of the rule of two, the person who came up with the rule of two was actually voiced by Luke Skywalker. <laughs> the most evil Sith Lord ever was was by the greatest Jedi. Well, because ever. I know I know they brought Sam Witwer in for a lot of things, voice acting wise. And I was trying to think, I'm like, did they have him come in for that? And then I thought about it. Again, I was like, no, they had Mark Hamill for that. I don't know why they brought Mark Hamill in, but they did. <laughs> did you get to meet Mark Hamill? Me? No. Yeah. No, I wish. He what about Sam Witwer? I can't remember. I don't think so. That well, would have been cool. Sam I'm Witwer, sorry. I'm sorry. That would have made. But you know what? I got to work with Tia, and I got to work with Freddie, and I... I okay, okay. Everybody. I have a question real fast before we go to the next yeah. one. How is oh meeting God. Freddie Prince Jr.? I'm sorry. I'm like, uh, that's Garrison and I's like Scooby Doo was our like our movie. Scooby- so I grew up on there was Ed, so there was the original version of she's or it was it used to be called she's all that no he's all that no she's all that one of those it was like this like mm-hmm. when I was a kid there were all these movies that it was like this really hot guy who's like the star football player and he kind of fell for the the nerdy girl in school right. and changed her into this pretty girl and that's what he decided to date so he starred in the original version of that movie i think there's a new version now called he's all that but this one was she's all Mm. that so it was kind of and i was a huge buffy the vampire slayer fan who obviously yeah and 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 so uh he's he's so nice i mean he's such a nice guy that and again like you know part of the job is you end up meeting a lot of famous like really crazy like in Marriage Story, I had two scenes with Scarlett Johansson. So, you know, so you meet really famous people all the time. So you kind of immediately, just like, you know, you don't like to get approached and people being like, oh my God, CJ, it's so cool. <laughs> You're in lights. Like, so I didn't want to do that. Right. So, but he was, he was such a cool me. guy. He was cool. So <laughs> it's just like, hey, what's up? You know, so. Okay. I, I, I haven't seen that movie. Um, is it a hot scene with you and Scarlett Johansson? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I got cut out. Oh, I got, did you? I oh, that's two, Yeah, I had two big, like two nice scenes and huh. I got cut out. Is so. she down to earth too, though? Like, is yeah, she, like, she was really actually just... really cool. She, um, I mean, like, you know, Freddie's really warm and super friendly and she was in the midst of shooting a really serious movie. So, but she, you know, a lot of times what happens is they do, you know, they do, co- they do coverage, they do the master shots. And then they do close-ups and they did her like uh, mid and close-ups first. And then they switched to me. And a lot of times my friends have told me this has never happened to me, but it's happened to a lot of friends that if you have someone who's super famous, they'll leave when it's your close-up and your stuff. Cause they're like, I got better things to do. I don't need to worry about it. And I'm not famous. So, um, so she stayed though. She stayed throughout and, and Noah Bombeck makes you do a lot of takes. I think 25, 30, we did a lot in each portion, 40. I mean, like there were a lot of takes. So she stayed for all of it for me. And I'm well, to this cool. day, I'm like, that's a cool person. Cause yeah. um, again, yeah. she didn't have to. And so. you can off of the, other, we, the other person. Yeah. And everything you see on her, everybody has nothing but like high things to say about her on set. Like every interview is like, she's always so sweet. She's always so welcoming. And then like, it was like, I have to ask about Freddie. And then you mm-hmm. led the Scarlet. And I was like, <gasps> oh, you're going to see with Scarlett Johansson? What? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like it was actually funny in that scene. I had a lizard. I, I was playing a school teacher of her son. Um, and I have this, they gave me a pet lizard. And so we were trying to figure out how to do deal with the lizard. And the lizard smelled really bad. <laughs> and so we were like, gosh, this lizard smells really bad. And, you know, and it was kind of funny. And she's like, well, I've got dogs. You know, they, they can smell too. And I was like, look, my cat smells. So, you know, but she was super, super cool. She was more professional. Like Freddie was kind of like, hey. And, you know, ball. he's like super down to earth in a lot of ways. But she was really cool. And again, like I've had so many friends tell me stories of, you know, they do a scene with a famous person and the person leaves 
but she did not. She stayed the whole time and kept acting. And God bless her, you know. And Harrison does his his voice lines, and then he leaves, and then everybody else comes in and does their lines. Oh, really? See, yeah. that's something like that's, that's Harrison tough. Ford. Yeah. <laughs> Harrison Ford does as he pleases. Like, that's that's true. just who he that's is. That's true. If he didn't do that, we would have to ask if he was sick and dying because that's just <laughs> not his character and yeah. himself. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Okay. In Star Wars Rebels, there, there were crates. Were, okay, well, let me restart that because I don't know what I'm reading here. In Star Wars Rebels, the crates were secretly color-coded so the creators knew what they were and what each one of them meant. They had red and gray. What did each one of those colors mean? Red means it's going to blow up. Gray means it's just there. It's just an obstacle. <laughs> I always thought it was something that they hid behind, you know, while they were getting shoot, <laughs> shot at. Because every time they're getting shot at, they're hey, behind, behind some gray crates. My various knowledge of video games, if there's something red, you shoot it and it blows up, okay? Yep. <laughs> That's fair. Is that true? Is that the answer? No. no. Uh, the answer was red was for food and gray was for weapons. Well, See, I said red opposite. would be for blood. <laughs> <laughs> like you're just transporting blood red around. Was food. <laughs> Shoot it! We gotta get this red blood to this planet. <laughs> the Twi'leks need blood on, or they're all gonna die. Okay. Uh, question number ten. This is the last question. Jedi Master Shakti and Ahsoka Tano were Togruden. How do you say that? Yep, Togruden. Togruden's species. Togruden's enjoyed eating small rodent-like creatures native to Shrill, Shrilly, whatever you say that. What was the name of those rodents? Guinea pigs. Guinea pigs? <laughs> like, really? You, you, think you were really quick to answer people that. People just eating guinea pigs on a cartoon? Well, I don't people know. People eat guinea pigs. Guinea pigs. Guinea pigs. <laughs> I was going to say a womp people rat. People eat guinea pigs. A womp rat? Nope, it's none of those. A I guinea pig, it. really? Giant New York City rats, like what we talked yes. about before. <laughs> what did you call oh, them? What kind of, how big are they? The size of a dog? That thing was the size of a cocker spaniel. It was yeah, huge. cocker spaniel. <laughs> I was like, holy crap, that's a big rat. Like, I was scared. Like, oh, That could feed a family of four for a long time. Hey, the way the world's going, they might be eating them here oh. pretty soon. Yeah. Damn, inflation. Uh, they were called... Okay, I don't know how to say You're this You're going to butcher word. this. Yeah. <laughs> the mirrors. It's T-H-I-M-I-A-R-S. The mirrors. Nope, not even going to try it. T-H. Tamaris. Tamaris. T-H-I-M-I-A-R-S. The mirrors. The mirrors. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Hmm. If I, hey, I, both of my daughters have 26 letters in, in their name, and I'm, I've been their father what? for 20 years, over 20, well, let's see, my youngest daughter is 19, 18. She's 18. My oldest daughter is 22. You went and I still mess alphabet? up their name. Okay, my oldest daughter's name is Kri Abriani Mani McDaniel. And my youngest daughter's name is Kiara Sana Janan McDaniel. I don't know my ex-wife name. We have another one. We're just going to go alphabetical order. Abacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacadabacad
There Very you simple. Go. Okay, that's, that's a good old fashioned name right there. I that's my little that. sister. <laughs> that's my little sister's name. Uh, naming process is John Michael. And I was like, cool. So how did you I get little... your name? Sharmilla, that's a pretty name. There yeah. is a, you get that? Thank you. There is a very, very famous Indian actress named Sharmila Tagore who uh, was in Sajid Ray is this famous filmmaker who uh, won a lot of awards and, and uh, very, very like Martin Scorsese is a huge fan of his work. And my mom thought she was the most beautiful woman in the world and loved that name and loved her. So I got named after her. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because both my parents were like, oh, God, you're an actor. This is terrible. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, you guys did it. It's your fault. You put it in the uh, universe. That's why I I had a feeling that that's what you were going to say because when I was researching everything about you and and that's what popped up and I'm like, she was in a black and white film? Like, I didn't think she was that old. Jesus, no, no, this movie is like, <laughs> such a oh, She doesn't age. Although, who knows what Wikipedia says? So I might I was be like, like 85 well, no, years I just, old. I, when I Googled your name, because I'm like, I, when I was, like I said, I was trying to figure out, I'm like, all right. So when I looked it up, I typed in your name and I went to IMDb. And, uh, but when I first typed it in on Google, the other actors came Charmilla up as well because yeah. there's only I think there's only two of you on that's ever been named Sharmila ever. And so when hers came up and I'm looking at like the, the film comes up, I'm like, wait a minute. She's not that old. Like, she, there's no way this movie was made in like the 1800s. It was like one of the first movies ever. Like, this is this is way too old. This had to be in at least the 40s when this movie was made. She's not that old. And I was like, so, yeah, that's how uh that's but how, it's an old fashioned name. So yeah. it's almost like if I was named like Millicent or Esther or something like that. Margaret. Except like Margaret. Yeah, that was Margaret my grandmother's name. That was yeah. my grandmother's name. So oh, I Margaret. was named after an actor too. Oh, who were you named after? Kyle who? Um Kyle McLaughlin. Uh, the dude yeah. from uh Dark uh Dark Shadows, Quentin Quentin. Whatever. I think his name is Quentin Lakeel. I was named after somebody. I don't know their name, but <laughs> But he played, he was the vampire in Dark Shadows. Yeah, yeah. Quentin, what, I can't what's remember the what actor's name, name? My mom was a fan of that show. Yeah, I have um, MS brain right now. I can't remember what it is, but it's Do Quentin's you have song. an excuse? I can't remember anything. So I didn't even remember my son's name from Ursa Run. So here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot, like, like when I first, when I was reading the thing and when I was making the questions, I'm like, Dude, Trishan was younger than Sabim. I was like, how's that? I'm like, wait a minute. Sabim went off to the Imperial Academy. Tristan stayed there. She, he was a little brother. She actually says it in one of the scenes. I had to like literally go back and watch because I was like, I think this is wrong. This is wrong. This is, I had to go back and watch the episode. I was like, oh, wait. Nope, he is the younger brother. So, because I, I was like, wait a minute. This doesn't make no sense. That she wasn't. Sabim is the youngest one. And oh, I was wrong. Thank you. So you were like me. I thought so too. <laughs> But I couldn't remember his name either. I was like, Tristan, who is Tristan? When did this Tristan character come up? You know, because when you're watching it, Tristan, I mean, he's just Tristan. You have Sabim and and Ursa. That's the two main characters in all most of the scenes that had to do with with the with the Darksaber and Ursa Ren and Rebels. So I was like, wait a minute. Then I had to like literally I had to go back and watch the episodes that you played in the Clone Wars because I was like, man, she was in the Clone Wars. I don't remember being in the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. I had to go back, watch the episodes of the Clone Wars like, oh, man, she was, too. I, how did I forget this? Like, I know Rebels. Rebels is my favorite at all. Well, the you know, animated they snuck series. it in because I remember when I went to record it, Dave was like, you know, He's like, I'm sorry, I know it's not a lot, but the fans will love this. This is literally a gift to them to put Ursa in here because it's going to be, they're going to go crazy for it when they see the helmet. And So, I mean, like that was, I mean, like, so that was one of the things he does think about, like, you know, a lot of the fan stuff and what what the people who are huge Star Wars fans going to get excited about. Yep. And it was like, because I was, I was, like, I was shocked because, like, I'm like, wait, it was in the Clone Wars? But where in the Clone Wars? I'm like, so I'm, like, looking through IMDb, and I'm like, so, so, so she was in this episode, this episode, this episode. Okay, let me go back. and You're like, oh. where? I'm like, okay, oh, there she goes right there. And then I forgot all about the, uh, the um, the what is it, the Night Owls and all that stuff. I had forgotten all about that stuff. Like, Rebels, I, I knew, because, like, Rebels is, like I said, Rebels is my favorite animated series out of all of them. I don't know. Rebels just, it just was more, what is that word? 
comforting. I, I liked the way that everything was done. Like maybe not the animation so much because I, you know, the animation was kind of uh, wonky, wonky. You know, the you running like kind of looked running. weird compared to Clone Wars. But the story and the, the the morals behind the stories, just I could relate to them better. And they just like I watched. I probably watched Rebels, shit, at least twenty times. And now we're watching it. I'm watching it again. Clone Wars, uh, just so hard to get past the first three seasons. <laughs> first, <laughs> or the first two, two seasons. Two seasons. First two seasons. Get <laughs> yeah, out of here. Third season's yeah. when we get all the great arcs. Yeah, because we got the Mortis arc in, is in the, the mall third season. Arc. And mall and, it leads yeah. into the Maul arc and then Maul and then it goes into Ahsoka's arc. And then it comes all back together. It's really nice. It's one of my favorite arcs. But yeah, it was it it it, it was it's great. And just I don't know, like like you said earlier, you know, that, that confrontation between a, a, a parent and a child. Like cause I have them with my kids all the time. And especially now that they're grown, because I don't know what happens when a child hits 18. I'm grown. Pay your own bills then. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gone, you know, so I could see Bye. I could relate to the to the tension that was going on between Ursa and Sabine. And Sabine trying to like and then also not getting the respect and in, in the the, the uh, uh, what is it? The, the, I want to say gratitude, but that's not the word like the res the respect from the family because you didn't do what they did. Yeah. So I, I could relate to Sabine because like me and my family, I, mean, I love my entire family. But, you know, it took a long time for them. Like, what are you doing? Like you're doing YouTube. What is that? That's not a career. You know, you're doing this and you're doing this and that. that that's not careers. You're, you know, you're going flying across the country to say four words in a movie. That's not a job. You know, it's stupid stuff like that. So they didn't ever respect me for the things that I was doing. So that was kind of in some of the choices that I made in life. So it was like I kind of related to that as well. So I had it on both sides. So them the rebels just made a lot of sense because it was Kanan trying to, you know, be this big brother or father figure to Ezra. Then Ezra's been on his own since he took since from until he was 13 and him kind of doing his own thing. So that was relatable as a parental a parental thing. And then you had Ursa and Sabine. The, y'all's characters and the way that they interacted all these things like this i don't know that's what i liked about rebels it just it had that more of a family environment it, it was all about family the coming together of the rebels how everybody worked together and how they established the rebels before we got row one so it made a lot of sense and that's why i'm hoping that andor comes in and does the same thing because i'm i'm super excited about the andor series it just looks and it's supposed to be pg-13 i think ain't that we then we come up with that yeah and we looked that up. Yeah, it's PG thirteen, so it'll be like the first Star Wars that's not G rated. Not well, literally, G. my favorite movie is Rogue One. I love this movie. So my absolute yes. favorite favorite Star Wars movie is that. And we've had plenty of arguments about that. So Garrison's good. favorite movie. The, thank you, Garrison. You and I. Um, but Rogue yeah, One is my I, second favorite, but I just Revenge of the Sith is the, the greatest. It has the best scene ever in Obi Wan and Anakin fighting. That's the best fight no. scene ever. I, At the end of Rogue One, when the planet is getting destroyed and they sit there and they look yeah. at it, is one of the saddest, most beautiful moments in film. It's just what are you talking about? <laughs> Chewie losing his mind because Han went into carbonite and Empire Strikes okay, Back. Okay, that was is pretty good too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and how about Leia with that? With with uh, what's his name? The big fat dude, uh, oh, Jabba, Jabba. Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, it's sad that you I can say like that, that, and we all know it's Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> the big That's the big fat, fat dude. dude. Oh, That's the big fat dude. <laughs> that was I don't know. That's to me the lightsaber duel. Well, I'm an action. I love action. So the lightsaber duel between Anakin and Obi-Wan and just the emotion that Ewan and McGregor put into that scene when he was like, Guillermo, you were my brother, Anakin. I loved you. And he's crying and Anakin ain't got no arms and legs and he's on fire and you just watch, and he's just watching this and he just, dude, that's like the greatest stuff. That's just great. I mean, it's Look, just- Ewan McGregor can read the phone book and I would watch it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I, I would probably watch, like if it took him like funny. five hours, I would literally watch a five-hour video of him doing that. It would like, be funny, too. 
I don't know. Have you guys ever seen his motorcycle show that he does? Yes. Where he's, uh, yeah, it's amazing. It's hilarious. So, him and his best friend. I think have you awesome. ever, uh, Charmella, have you ever seen Sunset Limited? Seen what? Sunset Limited. Sunset Limited. It's mm-hmm. um, it's Samuel Jackson and um, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, played in uh, oh, oh my my brain ain't working. Um, it's Samuel Jackson and uh, oh man, he played in uh, uh, uh the movies, uh, the movies on the boats with um Steven Seagal. What's the name? Uh, Under Siege or whatever. Um, he played what? in uh, oh, man, why can't I think of? I mean, okay, I gotta look it up. Y'all talk. Oh, yeah, Tommy Lee Jones, Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, and they Tommy just sit. They just sit in this apartment for two hours, like the whole movie. They're sitting in this apartment talking, just them two. And it's one of the best movies oh, I've I ever love seen. That ever. says the guy who like, just loves action. <laughs> no, this has no action in it. There's like no action in it, but they're discussing like so. So Samuel Jackson is like a a a, a, a kind of a dude that's kind of grown up like a little bit hard, but he got into religion. And then Tommy Lee Jones is like a scientist and he's like a he um, he's like a professor at a college. So he's bringing science. One's bringing religion and they just talk to each other for two hours. And it is one of the most thrilling movies I have ever watched oh, in my I life. See this movie. It's that called like Sunset Limited. Sunset it's Limited. like, oh, like the first like I was like, man, who, like when I literally looked it up when like, so it popped up on the screen, I said, Tommy Lee Jones and Samuel Jackson did a movie. I turned it on and I read the little thing. You know how the little thing pops up and you can read it now. See, back in back when we were young, you couldn't do that. Now you can do that. But anyway, I, I clicked it on there and I'm, I'm like, they're just sitting in an apartment this whole time. Like, how is this going to be interesting? But I, I said, all right, I'm going to give it a chance. And I well, clicked I on it. Tommy Lee Jones and he directed this movie. Like he oh, was really? the director in this movie. So it was written by Cormac McCarthy and it was directed by Tommy Lee Jones. Mm. One of the best movies I've ever seen. And there's oh, no I action. I gotta see this. It's, it's just so compelling because they're going back and forth. Cause Tommy Lee Jones was like going to commit suicide or something. And, and Samuel L. Jackson stopped him. And then they're just talking about religion versus science this whole time. And they're trying to, to argue, they're arguing back and forth. I mean, it's so good. It's so compelling. It got a, it got a 70% on the tomato meter and it got an 80% on the audience score. Like this, that's it's pretty good, good when they're almost together. They're like, just talking. Yeah. And they're just talking. People aren't time. used to that anymore. I'm game. I gotta watch this. Uh, yeah, I gotta I've been see telling y'all to watch it. I done told y'all like 10 times watch this yeah, movie. He like, talks about this movie all the time. Oh, it's like one of my it. favorite movies. Char- Charmilla, what is your what movie would you recommend? What's your like favorite movie? My favorite movie of all time. Well, my favorite, favorite uh, so I have I love it's hard. It's like picking your child. This is like the Sophie choice of questions. Uh, my favorite movie of all time is an Alfred Hitchcock movie called Notorious. Not Notorious B.I.G. Um, <laughs> That's a good movie, me. too. It's a good movie. And I was like, but it's not that. This one is with Cary Grant, Ingrid Bergman, Claude Rains. And it is set right after World War II. Ingrid Bergman's father was a Nazi scientist. She switches over and goes undercover to help the um, U.S. government who... Uh, um, Cary Grant is a spy and he goes undercover and he basically trains her and uh, she goes undercover, marries uh, a Nazi who lives in Argentina and they find information about how they're create like they're um, they're figuring mining something that's going to create bombs or whatever. And it's so it's got this really famous scene. It's one of the longest, one of the fir- the longest continuous shots um, that f- that was first done. And it is, she's at a top of a staircase and she steals a key and you see the key and you see her go down the staircase. And there was the code at the time that you couldn't have love scenes over a certain amount of, you know, they couldn't be kissing for more than like one second or something mm-hmm. like that. So Hitchcock bypasses this by, cause she has to give this key to um, Cary Grant's character. She bypasses it by they're whispering in each other's ears and they like peck. And then he like looks at her neck and says something and pecks. And this scene goes, I think it goes on for like five or six minutes without a cut. And it's, I think it's one on of the, the most... documentary. There's a documentary that has that scene in there. Um, oh, the really? Director's cut. It's, I think it's called uh, the director's it's cut. My favorite movie of all time. 
Um, then I love All About Eve, which is like an old movie, but like a newer, kind of newer. So another movie that I love and it's written so well is this movie because you guys like action or you like it. It's Three Days of the Condor. That's with Robert Redford and Faye Dunaway. And I think it's Sydney Lumet, I think. Um, but uh, it, I like kind of spy movies. And this is, again, kind of a spy movie. Uh. <laughs> and then there's also Broadcast News, which is James Brooks with Holly Hunter and William Hurt and Albert Brooks, and it's kind of the inside of a um, of a newscast, like a, a high-end news place. It's got some of the best lines. Like one of my I favorite lines in the world is, what do you do when you all, what, what do you do when your life has surpassed your dreams? And Albert Brooks says to him, keep it to yourself. <laughs> That's a good scene. Yeah, that is it's, a good, it's a good line, like it's that. a great line. Wow. Good. That's a really good line. Yeah. yeah, that's that's some writing right there. Yeah. So yeah, I'm like a I I I also look. I love. I'm gonna get you, sucker. I really am all over the place in the movies that I love. So I love it. I love it. <laughs> it ain't Star Wars. It's westerns for me. I can't. I can't help that. You know what one of my other. favorite movies is? Legends what? of the Fall. That's a good movie. That was a great movie. That movie was really really good, and it's like. And you would never think that I would watch that, and I don't even know how. I think one of I think my is friend is there Candy. any action in that movie? A little bit. <laughs> there's like a fight between the two brothers, right? Yeah, there's there's a little bit of action, and then they have the war scenes when they're in World War Two. But like, I don't know. They just I wouldn't even say so much. It was the acting. It was just a well a well written out story, and it just gave you every type of like when I watch a movie, I want to be emotionally engaged. Yeah. And it just gave you every emotion. Like it went through like everything, love, hate, you know, family feud, Ooh, parental, yeah. parental, you know, the, the parent not respecting what you do, then the parent, you know, standing up for you at the end. And it just had, it just had everything in it. And I was like, this is a great movie. This, it was really, really a good movie. But I like, you know, I don't know. I don't have really a favorite genre, uh, like genre of movie. I watch a lot of different stuff. And a lot because of my ex-wife and my wife now, you know, because I get to watching some of the films and that they're watching. And I'm like, damn, this is a really good movie. Like, I don't know what it was. But I like I like the top. I liked Twilight. <laughs> and that's not something. My mom loves this movie. She watches it all the time. I always joke she loves that and Charmed. And I was like that, like it's for like 12 year old girls. But my mom <laughs> happens to love. She's like a 70 year old woman who loves watching this stuff. So. My, between my wife and my daughter, they have got me watching like I watched like all the um like all the vampire diaries and the originals. Yep. That would be the, my mom. Yeah. She loves it. Loves us. So. And it's like I just get enthralled by these movies. But then I turn around and I get them watching, you know, like Flash and Star Wars stuff. And they'd be like, why am I watching this? I only like this. Why watch your stuff? And I like it to like my stuff too. Well, yeah, do you guys ever works. watch old movies? So oh, you yeah. guys ever? Yeah. Thank you. Me. I'm yeah. a big. Well, I That's like fine. I like the older school westerns and the older school um, war movies. Spaghetti like westerns. I don't That's watch a lot of spaghetti westerns. I mean, what? I like a Are couple you? of I like a couple of them. You like, just, like searchers stuff like that, right? I, like my favorite movie is John Wayne's last movie, The Shootist, and my daughter really loves watching The Shootist, and. Like she likes Big Jake or McClintock or. Uh, Have you seen Red watched, River? Yes. Right? Yes. Amazing that was movie. a good movie. It was a good movie. The Quiet it was Man. A, I know it's not like Western, but it's kind of. <laughs> I, I, well, the biggest like with her, with Phoenix, she's she's just like being introduced to these and she's actually like comprehending them. So when we're watching, like when we watch The Shootist, she really likes how John Wayne talks. She like smiles every time he oh, would talk oh, to, oh. and it just it, 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 her face. She like, oh, okay, we're done. Can we go home? And I'm like, yeah, we can go home. What do you want to do? Can we watch the shootist? This is like the fifth day in a row. Yeah, I'm not gonna argue with you. Let's go. And that's kind of it, disturbing, it, though, if you think about it. your three year old daughter is wanting to watch the shootist. <laughs> well, and she doesn't. She doesn't like the gun scenes. She just likes how John Wayne presents himself in the movie, and Man, how he was like, a great actor. Yeah, well, she's she's like, like I like taste. the way he he I like the way he talks, and I'm like, all right. So I don't care for the gun scenes much, but I like the way he talks. And like McClintock, she thinks he's hilarious in McClintock when he gets drunk and he throws his hat 
on the wind, uh, the the, uh, oh, the yeah. yeah the windmill on top of the house. She loves when he does that and counts the number. She'll say the number with him when he counts it out. Wait, and, so then have you shown or uh, can you? I mean, like it might be too Butch Cassidy. Yes, and uh, yeah, Butch Cassidy and the Signing Ants Kid. Uh, we watched Tombstone for the first time the other day. She really likes the way Val Kilmer plays um, Doc, right? Yeah, Doc. Yeah, Doc Holiday. She's she likes his Louisiana accent and how he, she's like, why does he look so pale? <laughs> she mm-hmm. doesn't say no. Why does he look? She says white. She's like, why does he look so white? And I'm like, because he's sick, baby. And she's like, is he okay? And she's and she doesn't know it's a movie, so she's like, is he okay? And I'm like. I don't want to tell you in real life, Val Kilmer. No, no, don't say in real life. (laughs) Y'all didn't tell me that neither, man. Y'all suck. I'm just letting y'all know that because I finally watched Top Gun. Wait, you had never seen Top Gun? No, 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 no. I'm talking about the new one. No, the second one. The The second one. I hadn't watched it yet. (laughs) I'm so busy. It it really is really hard for me. If I don't go to the movies to see a movie, it's really hard for me to sit down because I'm always in the studio working and and because I do so much different stuff. Um. But I hadn't watched it. So the other day I watched it. I think it was Monday I watched it. And y'all did not tell me that Val Kilmer looks that bad. Like, he like look, yeah. He looks he's terrible. Been, like, well, I knew he was got, sick, he got, but he I did not know he looked cancer, that like. He looks he like he's lung, about 70, 80 years old. There's yeah, an amazing he got lung documentary. Cancer. Yeah, there's an amazing documentary about it. It's, it's great him. because he was approached. So when they first initially talked about doing the second one, he he was they were like, "Hey, would you come back and be Iceman?" He's like, "Right now, I'm not doing so hot. I don't know if I'll be around in time for you guys to want to get this done." And I was like, "Val Kilmer was already talking about death, and that's pretty sad." And then he got lung cancer, and he's got the hole in his throat. And he like he the documentary is amazing, and it, like the fact that his spirits are still so high even after all that. So like a lot my favorite about his character in the first one, like Val I love was my yeah. favorite co- favorite character in the first. He's one, one of my so favorite Batman's. To, to to see him like like that, I was like, oh man, wait, look, like dude, Val Kilmer looks like he's ninety years old. What's wrong with him? I, mean, I knew he was sick, but I didn't know he was that bad. I was like, oh man, that sucks. Y'all yeah, didn't tell me it that. It was good. And yeah, the fact it was good. It was him, really like, good. That was really That's cool. Really well, yeah, because originally he didn't want to because of how, like, when he first had that surgery, he didn't want to do anything. He just, he didn't want to be a part of anything. He didn't want to talk to people. He just tried to self-isolate. And I guess his kids and his wife were like, dude, you can't just lock yourself away. You're going to wither away. And they got him in Top Gun Maverick. And I was like, what? I, hey. I see the Iceman. And that was- and I was surprised. Usually when they make a second part to a movie, it's never as good. That was a good movie. I really I really right. liked that. I liked it. Like Tom Cruise played the hell out of Maverick in that movie. He, that he was one thing job. I did not rank a four. Thank you very much. What'd you rank it? You a also, wait, the, is the five the highest then for you? <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, I, that was like She's coming nine. at you. <laughs> Wait, you're wait, you're rating your scale is one to ten, and you rate everything a four. That's depressing. Most <laughs> things, man, you're a critic. But like most the things is a four. To six range is probably where like most of my like movies when we were watching, like we watched an episode, and he said an eight, and I was in complete shock when he said eight. On you one haven't of heard episodes. eight often. And it was the it was the rebel show, the one that had Ahsoka and. Uh, where Ezra and um, Kanan, they're going to, because the Inquisitors are going after the kids. I think it's um, the the Force. I think it's episode. Wasn't in a good mood that day, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. He, he, <laughs> said, he said, I don't know, seven or eight. And me and Garrison, I mean, me and CJ were both sitting there like, did you just say an eight? Like, I, it's a great episode, but an eight? I gave it a seven. And he was like, yeah, it was an eight. I was like, an eight? Oh, man, are you sick? You got the flu? Got COVID? <laughs> Are you okay? You can tell us. You know we're friends. Yeah, <laughs> we're all close here. We, we're pretty honest. <laughs> the tombstone or that uh, Top Gun? That was like an eight or nine, though. That was an eight funny. or nine, huh? Yeah. I just like the fact that it was it was so close to the original. They didn't Without try to being, change a lot, like while still being like a new movie, a different movie, just a remake. It wasn't just stupid fan service. It's still, I don't know, it's still good. 
That's and it just helps, you know, when you got good actors playing parts. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that, look, that. Tom Cruise knows what he's doing. You know, he actually flies jets, so he <laughs> he knows <laughs> he knows a lot. Dude, All that right. was going so fast through that canyon. I was like, dude, man, they're about to crash. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> like, dude, the, that's. I fast. love Miles Miles what, Teller. Tim? I love his acting. So mm -hmm. when they they announced that he was going to be Goose's son, I was like, oh, Miles Teller's going to be Goose's son. This is awesome. <laughs> I thought it was I'm, sad they didn't bring Meg Ryan back, though. She was still yeah, alive, right? Yeah. But I think they, I don't know. I, I haven't looked to see how she looks. They might have been like, you know, uh, she. She's had know. some work done. I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> I don't no, know. no, I mean, like, I mean, like, you, you know, you're a woman in Hollywood. It's kind of, it's tough not to. So. Oh, Miller. Yes. Who, at all the actors that you've, that you've had the opportunity to work with, who did you enjoy working with the most? Uh, Hugh Laurie was amazing. I had a small okay. role with him, but he's so cool to work with. So great. Uh, Carrie's awesome. Carrie and Tony and Bellamy were all really wonderful working. It felt like being part of a family. Um, Tony Shalhoub, he's awesome. He's so great. Uh, I liked, I was on an episode like of Joey. Uh, yeah, he's so good. He's And he's so kind. Yeah. And he had the best food on his set. The best food. <laughs> Which matters sometimes, you know. Um, and then uh, I loved Matt LeBlanc. He was great. He was hey. so fantastic to work with. And he was, he threw laugh lines my way and, and, uh, was really supportive and yeah I'm trying to think you know everybody like i don't i've had i'm not gonna say but recently i had possibly one of the worst experiences any of my friends has ever experienced with an incredibly 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 famous actor and uh you choose not to talk about those and you prefer yeah. to talk about the the good ones good. so yeah. i wouldn't say it i, I he was a dick. No, you can't say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you career. know, I'm like, I, I'm not as famous as this person. I can't say how terrible of a human being hey, you, are, need, so. hey, <laughs> you ain't even got to, I mean, you could be super famous, too, because look at, they, the Will just ruined his career. Yeah. Uh, that, that was sad. I don't want to get, I don't want to get into that, because I, I, I know what's going on behind those doors. I don't think that was all Will, but that's not my fault. Or it's not his fault, so. Hey, but I, I'm sorry. You, you just, I mean, that his career is over, like, He's not doing anything like, oh, come on. And I like Will Smith. He was really getting good as an actor. Like, yeah. he, you, you seen his performance well, going and, from the Fresh Prince bro, all the way up to now. He was getting really, really good. And, and he now. was doing the Fresh Prince show. And I guess they're not bringing that back ever since that whole oh, wow. situation. They, they canceled and, everything he was working on. Yeah. And it just, uh, it just, it, it hurts to see that happen. You know, it really does to, to see, you know, Somebody that's that good and 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 it was growing and grew to be such a good actor, just career just I mean, it only takes one instant and you can ruin your entire career and that I really wish he wouldn't have done it. I, yeah. I think there was a better way to handle that, but <laughs> nah, definitely. Yeah, behind the curtain where nobody saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait till, wait till the show is over. Y'all go out. Not on live like, TV. I remember <laughs> on I remember we were watching it in our <laughs> living room and I was like What's Will doing? And he gets up and just wah, just I thought smacks it was in. at first when I, I seen it, I thought it was staged. I thought it was staged. I thought it was a gimmick well, to you know. Chris was laughing, so I thought I really thought it was being played <laughs> out. <laughs> he was I thought laughing. it was, but it, wasn't. I, it was good. It was a clean smack too. I thought I thought he mm -hmm. literally. I thought it was a good acting part. He and like <laughs> when, when he sat down and started cussing him out, I was like, oh, that ain't fake. Huh? That's national that TV. Was... The f word is being dropped on live TV. That's that not sad. fake. That was very sad. All right. Well, we've been on here for two and a half hours. So and I we think... went down so many rabbit holes. <laughs> so many rabbit holes. Hey, that's what makes it fun. Charmilla, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about your experiences on Rebels and Clone Wars and all the other stuff that you've done that we talked about today. It, it, it was just, a, it, was it was a, real a delight. Pleasure. Oh, you guys are yeah, great. I had awesome. so much fun. Thank you. We would love to have you back on in the future. You got it. You got it. Anything. So we will see you guys on Wednesday. I, I, I'm trying to get my head straight here. This is coming out on Saturday, <laughs> right? Yeah, so we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Um, peace, and may the force be with you. 
Thank you for tuning in to LSR. If you've enjoyed the show, consider subscribing so you can be notified when new episodes are released. If you would like to be a guest on the show or just want to give us some feedback, feel free to email us. You can also reach out to us on all major social media platforms. Lightsaber Radio is produced by PicFilm Media and is a Swaycast original starring Garrison Turcott, CJ Elliott, and Kyle McDaniel. And don't forget to join us next time for more adventures in a galaxy far, far away.